Well, I wanted to go a little bit more all out and thank everybody that's been supporting the channel for this long to get us to the point to where we are today. It means the world. And once again, we have been brought together to uh, intermission, the point in time where we can take a break from the madness that happens in our day to day activities in the various sections of the Internet. You take a break and finally come back together as a online community, as an online family. In a lot of our cases, some of us have been talking on the Discord servers via email and really been keeping up in communications with each other as if we were friends in quote unquote real life. Right. I want to give a huge shout out to you for taking the time to listen to the channel, to the broadcast of the live stream right now coming out, out of uh, Fort Worth, Texas, over to you, the Dallas Fort Worth area over to you. A huge shout out to wherever you're listening, whether you're at work, your car, whether you're at the gym right now, whether you're doing chores, watching me on TV. We see uh, in Atlanta analytics that people are watching on TV. Shout out to you, Queen Mercy. Uh, whether you are just sitting in the park enjoying your day off, I want to thank you for spending time with us today. We've got a heck of a stream, heck of a stream planned for us today. We dig deeper into the madness that's known as the Manosphere, a collective group of millions of men that seek to, I guess you could say, burn down uh, civilization at this point. And they won't stop until they get exactly that. A, a collection of men that are just sad and pathetic. And I hate to even use the term men for them because it doesn't describe exactly who they are. Neferata says that shirt is fire. Thank you so much. I found it at Ross, a pawn, uh, not a pawn shop, but like a, you know, a deal kind of clothing store. Goodwill. Uh, Kier, thank you so much for all your continued contributions. Once again, if you saw your name playing on the intro, I want to give a huge shout out and thank you to you as well as the channel members. I didn't get to put some of the channel members names in there. T March says she's in Las Colinas, Irving. You're about 45 minutes away. Nice. Shuri says hello from NC. I'm new to your channel. I just joined yesterday. Well, welcome to the channel. Welcome to the channel. Glad to have you all here and shout out to everybody that is new on this channel. We're going to go ahead and dive right into it. We've got 67 people, 71 now people watching. Now, we have to do a couple of house cleaning, you know, works. You have to speak about a couple of issues that aren't related to the topic at hand. But trust me when I say we have a heck of a topic to speak about today. Trust me when I say it. First and foremost, though, I wanted to cover a particularly interesting story that is uh, coming from one of the best, the most educated of us. She is a black woman. She has a Ph.D., and I'll explain why exactly I'm covering this story and the madness of hypocrisy and contradictions that it lends over to the thought process of the millions of men who hate women. Not just black men, but white men, Asian men. In most cases, we talk about the black men because we are, for the most part, black on this channel. All right. There is a woman who is a um, who was the first black female transplant surgeon, and she says that organ donation is particularly low amongst black people. Why am I talking about this? Well, I'll tell you why in a second. For all of our audio listeners, all, all, all you're missing right now is a picture of the first black female um, transplant surgeon. All right. Velma Scanterbury told Zanger that the black community needs greater awareness about the need for more organ, organ donors among non-white Americans. She points to the Minority Organ and Tissue Transplant Education Program founded in 1991. African Americans, she says, have a difficult time, more difficult, getting on tri kidney transplant lists. Transplant list. I'm fumbling already. Here we go. Even though they are more likely to have end-stage renal disease, they trail whites in access to kidney transplants. They are often diagnosed late, she says, due to a lack of equity of health care, a.k.a. they don't have the money necessarily, all right? They don't have the money necessarily. Now, she said something else before I wrap this up. Uh, I want to read this. She said, my parents taught us that an education is important and that we can be anything we want to be. I did not grow up seeing obstacles. Wow. I saw possibilities, she told Zanger. My parents knew I wanted to be a doctor. And despite not having any means, my mother came to the United States, the best country in the world, the most rich, prosperous country in the world to clean floors. Suffering much humiliation to bring us from Barbados to this country. Today, she's a professor of surgery at Texas Christian University and the University of North Texas Health Science Center and Medical School in Fort Worth. What do you know, Texas? She's right down the road. Why am I bringing this up? Well, a huge shout out to also Shrooms, who's in the medical community. Huge shout out to all of our nurses, uh, Mocha Mami, who I believe is a nurse as well. The best of us, the black women who are actually fulfilling what Stan Pitas doesn't understand, the role that is very crucial to our community. And I want to say this, I'm getting ahead of myself, but if you would believe it or not, Ripley's believe it or not, there are more black female doctors than there are males. So when you hear when you hear millions of men try and chastise and admonish and demonize black women for getting doctorate's degrees and master's degrees and bachelor's degrees, when you hear this, I want you to I want you to have this conscious train of thought. 
that this same black woman that we kind of metaphorically analogized, if that's even the word, analyzed, um, I'm, I'm making up words. Hey, all words are made up at one point or another, so don't judge me. I can make up words. You kind of know what I mean. The same women that are fighting on the front lines, like we talked about in the last live stream for black men, face retribution from the same black men. Now, I want to I want you to just think about this for a second. This black woman is saying we need to have more black uh, surgeons. We need to have more transplant surgeons and we need more. Uh, um, we need more uh, light being shed upon the fact that minorities can't get transplants as easy. So she's essentially fighting for the black community. She's essentially fighting for the men, the millions of people that support Kevin Scamuels, who make fun of and mock women who have doctorate's degrees. We're going to get into that today, ladies and gentlemen. We're not holding back. The ignorance is always reaching new levels. And I know I say this all the time, but I really mean this. It's fascinating to me that the the most violent group of men who will probably have to walk into a trauma or emergency medicine facility with a gunshot wound or with their teeth knocked out by one of their fellow manospheric brethren are going to walk right into the majority of black doctors because they live in disenfranchised poor communities where most black doctors happen to work. This is a fact. I know two doctors. One of them uh, I know very closely. OK, they're both females, by the way. So most black female doctors are going to work towards or around the black areas just because hospitals tend to be very segregated, if I'm being completely honest with you. So the same black Negroid that's getting mad and trying to demonize, chastise, reprimand black women for going to school to get their doctorate's degrees. And in this case, to walk into the medical field to where they dominate more than the men do as far as being doctors will be the ones laying on the gurney shot up by their fellow Negroid manospheric type brothers begging for their lives to be saved. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we are getting into it today. I got time today. Today, I've got time. You cannot make this up. You cannot make this up. 109 people watching. Make sure that we like and share this broadcast. I understand that these messages can be touchy. They can be somewhat cut and dry and rub your family members the wrong way. But this message needs to be out into society. Society needs to see the type of men that are trying to bring our community back to the days of slavery. Society needs to see the type of men that are trying to hold the very best of us, the first black surgeon, female surgeon, transplant surgeon in this case, that's fighting for them. Society needs to see just what type of ignorance these baboon-like Negroids spiel and retort on a daily basis. Society needs to know this, and they will know this. If it's the last thing that I do, they're going to know this. First and foremost, i got to give a huge shout-out to our biggest channel contributors, Shrooms, Organic Black, Tony Morrison, and Kier, 101 Space Zero. i got to give a huge shout-out to those four lovely, lovely ladies. They've been supporting the channel. Uh, any donations are so much appreciated. Once again, you keep this channel moving, ladies and gentlemen, and I can't thank you enough. We're going to dive deeper into it. Why did I decide to, start to talk about weight today? Well, weight's one of the topics that it doesn't just affect black women, particularly. Now, the black manosphere loves to make it about black women, as if no other woman is overweight, as if uh, overweight, quote unquote. And we're going to debunk this entire overweight term. At the end of the stream, you're going to see just how foolish the notion of being overweight is. I'm going to explain to you why they use this medieval uh, systematic form of measurement. <laughs> By the way, the BMI index dates back to the early 1800s. Hint, hint there. <laughs> That's what these men are trying to use to, uh, to tell women that they're overweight. An index that was charted and manifested in the 1800s. I got time today. According to the data from the American uh, Association of American Medical, Co Medical Colleges, and I'll put this link after the live stream, I'll put it in the chat box if you just want to know so badly where I get these statistics from. The U.S. population is 13% black, yet only 4% of doctors are black. And while the percentage of black female medical school graduates has grown since 1986, the opposite was true of black male graduates until recently. You know what? I'm going to put the link up right now. I'll put the link up right now because I'm sure that they won't believe me. Here's the link for you. For you black statistics majors, particularly men who will try and say that I don't know what I'm talking about, check it out for yourself. Let's continue on here. <laughs> this is why I talk about the manosphere the way I do. But do they have degrees in the fields that matter? Something they always say. Do they have degrees in the fields that matter? 
When there are more female physician graduates in a field as important as the medical field, as a field that's important as saving lives, arguably the most important job in existence. When a group of men berate r women for choosing education, for choosing a career that seeks to improve the same community that Negroids are a part of. Which seeks to actively fight for the race of man that is the most uneducated, violent, criminally, criminally convicted group of men in the existence of mankind's history. Which seek to sacrifice decades of their lives studying, in some cases, for the moment of time these Negroids walk into the emergency room shot up by their fellow Negroids. They try and disparage the very lifeline of the broken black communities, quite literally the lifeline in a lot of their cases. When they seek to tell women to lead and to not lead with their education, I'm sorry. When they tell you that having a degree is masculine, when they come onto my channel and make statistics and, sta and statements like Stan Pitas did, and that's what black women are doing for the community. I want America, the world, I want everybody to, to, that's watching to know uh, that the modern day black man is the newest face of oppression that has not, has not existed in our history. Now, let's take this a step further. I just described this, but imagine once again, a level of ignorance as high as this, hating, berating, chastising women who decide to get PhDs in the medical field. It's equivalent to this. It's equivalent to walking into a restaurant, sitting down, cursing out the waitress as she's trying to do her best to take your order to serve you. Then upon her leaving to place your order, walking up to the kitchen cooks in the kitchen and cursing them out because you found out that they're not serving the lunch special anymore. Now, this is crazy and I'll explain why. Not only is it the, not the cooks or the waitress's fault in this case, but had you treated the employees with any sort of dignity, or humility, they most likely would have given you the lunch special if you would have cleared it with the manager first. But it doesn't stop there. Let me dig even deeper into the level of ignorance that these black men are walking in. Since you let your, you let your hateful, demonic emotions get to you so badly, you fail to realize that you cursed out, publicly humiliated, the very people responsible for the food that's getting ready to enter into your body, aka your lifeline, aka your life source, aka the black women that outpopulate black males as far as doctors go. Hello. Sit on that for a second. You don't think that the cooks in the back are going to start thinking maybe nefarious thoughts uh, of putting something and maybe a shard of glass into your food? Maybe maybe, maybe just throwing your burger bun on the floor and stomping on it? You don't think they're going to do something badly when you treat them like crap? Now, I want, you to, I want you to place yourself in the shoes of a black woman who's a doctor, who is aware of the manosphere, who's aware of the millions of followers that Kevin Scamiel and Coach Greg Adams and all these other black men have as a collective. And I want you to imagine yourself being wheeled into her care and upon realization that's a black woman that you're going to be dealing with, begging for her mercy, for her to save you, for her to give her professional advice that you chastise and demonized her for accruing over the course of 10 to 15 years. In nurses cases, four to eight years. I want you to imagine that. How do you think they're going to feel? You see, black men don't understand that they are their own undoing most of the time. They'll hear me say this and say, oh, well, it's the doctor's job to make sure that the that they're always taken care of because they got to be professional. Yeah, 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 yeah. You don't think doctors can get away with maybe not giving you the best service that they deem that you're not one of their priority uh, um, um, cases? Doctors are humans, too. Moreover, why should I, why would I feel the need to help an enemy? Now, I'm sure a lot of doctors have enough emotional intelligence and emotional responsibility to maybe not dip to the same levels that I operate or I would operate in, if I'm being completely honest with you. Because I I'll be honest once again, if I knew that somebody that didn't like me was wheeled into my emergency room, I would have some internal struggles. That's just the nature of me being a human. That's the nature of me being completely brutally honest. But yet you'll sit here and demonize black women who are doctors. Why would they help you? And moreover, why should they help you? No other race of men demonizes their women for having education. Let's move on to the situation of weight. Now, I want to introduce a couple of women to you that are overweight. All right? Every single woman that you're getting ready to see, and for my audio listeners who are listening right now, just know that I'm showing Instagram profiles and random screenshots. If you have the opportunity to look at it at some point or another, um, just know that you're not missing too much. I'll break down and describe in complete accuracy everything that the viewers right now are seeing for themselves, all right? Every single woman I'm getting ready to show you right now by the BMI index is overweight. We'll start with Tabria Majors. 
She is a plus size, quote unquote, model. Debria Majors. Very pretty. Very pretty. Very pretty. All right, let's gonna go on to the next one here. That was Debria. The next one, uh, her name is Akisha Murray. Akisha Murray. Let's check check her out really quickly. Now, the reason I'm showing this is to prove a point, right? I'm showing this to prove a point. That is Akisha Murray. She is overweight by the BMI's body index. The next one is um, Leslie Sedora. Leslie Sedora. All right, that's Leslie right there. Uh, the next one, uh, we'll show uh, one more. We'll show one more, and I'll explain why I'm showing all of these. I'm sure you already have a good idea. Her name is Ashana Finesse. Ashana Finesse. All those women that you just saw are overweight, all right? According to the BMI index. <laughs> But here's a couple of other special mentions for you. According to the BMI index, Kim Kardashian is two pounds away from being overweight. According to the BMI index, Nicki Minaj is overweight at five foot two, one thirty seven. According to the BMI index, Black China is overweight at five foot two, one thirty six. <laughs> All right. These are. What what society would deem as the most curvaceous, curvaceously beautiful, quote unquote, women who just happen to emulate the body of black women. Right. Who just happen to emulate the body of of African women and African-American women. Keep this in mind. Now, I know what the red pill is going to say. No, oh, well, Nikki had surgery, so it doesn't count. As if black women don't naturally have bigger assets and curvaceous bodies. All right. As if they wouldn't sleep with every single woman that you just saw a picture of just now. As if as if, if they had a chance, they wouldn't wed, marry, simp for, drink the bathwater of every single woman that I just showed on the stream. We all know they would. We all know they can't even get women like this. But I'm not trying to just prove that point uh, uh, of their thirst and their lack of women. I'm trying to prove a point that the standards of beauty are so far skewed that it's it's incredible. But they will try and use this medieval quite literal medieval standard of beauty to describe and to to bash black women's identity at this point they'll try and use this let me tell you a little bit about the bmi index something that none of these negroids have decided to research for themselves the man that made this up his name was lambert adolfo jacques all right he was a belgium astronomer mathematician statistician and sociologist who founded and directed the brussels Obver uh, observatory and was influential in, in introducing statistical methods to social sciences all right. He also founded the science of anthropometry, anthropometry. Jeez, I'm saying this horribly. And developed the body mass index scale, originally called the Quetelet Index. All right. Now, the manosphere is quick to bring up the scientific model that has roots dating back to the 1800s. Just to give you an idea how truly preposterous this is, when the BMI index was made up and brought into mainstream, when the BMI index was starting to be applied to populations and civilization, cars weren't even invented. <laughs> Body mass index is what BMI stands for. When this index determining whether or not you are over underweight or you're the perfect weight was conceptualized, cars weren't even a conception at the time. Imagine if we still relied on scientific practices from the 1800s. Imagine if we remain insistent on technological and ideological beliefs that were invented in the 1800s. This is wild. Stick with me. Let's go ahead and take this a bit further. Let's take this a bit further. Let's look at some overweight men, shall we? Let's look at some overweight men. Every man that you're getting ready to see here is overweight. I actually don't have that many pictures of the overweight men. I'm just going to show a few just for the sake of, for the sake of time. Before I do, I'll show a couple more overweight women since I have a couple pictures here. Before I do, before I do. It's a picture of uh, Brianna Moore. She's overweight, according to the BMI Mass Index. Overweight. Overweight. 
And here's a kicker for you. We're gonna, I'm going to show you an obese. <laughs> According to the BMI, this is obese. Now, I want you to, I want y'all ladies to, to, to tell me, do you think that if a manospheric, pedospheric, childlike demon was to see this, this woman in the store, that he would uh, refer to her as obese, that he would reject her because of her obesity status on the BMI index? Let's, let's be honest here. I'm willing to bet that there's a good chance uh, that uh, that they would probably not have an issue with dating her and being physical with her. I'm just going to go out on them and say that. But I'm sure they'll come to my channel and, and tell me, oh, no, I wouldn't get with her because, 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 because. Right, right, right. <laughs> right. One of the most physically gifted athletes of all time, Herschel Walker, uh, recently took a picture in his 50s. He's an MMA fighter. Herschel Walker, according to the BMI index, is not just overweight, but obese. This is Herschel Walker. So the reason I'm showing you these pictures, and if you're watching on audio, just know that the picture that we're looking at right now is probably one of the best built uh, athletes and NFL players that uh, the history of mankind has ever seen. Herschel Walker is an absolute monster. As a matter of fact, when he was in high school, there were stories of him tying trees to his ankles and running up hills. That's how he got his thighs to the size they were. He was a literal demigod amongst men. This dude's body is unreal. According to the BMI index, once again, the picture we're looking at would determine him as not overweight, but obese. That is the next level above overweight, according to the BMI index. Now, once again, for the audio listeners, if you see this guy, uh, he's ripped, he's shredded, six-pack, huge arms, huge traps, huge pecs. He's a physical specimen. He's a physical specimen. You don't see guys like Herschel Walker. Right? Everybody that you just saw is overweight or obese. Marshawn Lynch is the NFL running back, 5'10", 211 pounds. That puts him in the obese category. Not overweight, but obese once again. And this is an NFL running back. This is the danger that the manosphere poses. Now, they're going to call me a panderer. They're going to call me a pander bear until pigs fly across the sky. I'm, I'm, I'm fine with that. But I'm a panderer because I use their narrative and literal definition of beauty and or health weight standards in this case to prove them wrong. They're the ones that are going to say that black women are all overweight because of this index. However, the same people who are quite literally the most fit in our society in most cases are overweight as well. But once again, black men, the manosphere, these evil demons don't have situational nuance. They don't have compassion. They don't even have the intellect to begin to think about understanding how nuances can carry over depending on what type of statistic you're trying to bring analyzation and rationalization to. They don't get that, nor do they care to get that. Because they're just a little lacking up there. There's something wrong with a lot of these black guys, all right? Something wrong with most of the manosphere guys. They're losers. We know that. But even past that, there's something mentally that's off. They're mentally stunted. They don't have the ability to listen to what I'm saying right now, to see the pictures of what I'm saying right now, and to process it as actual rational uh, line of thought. They don't have that. They see what I'm saying and say, oh, there he goes, pandering again. I could, I could bring the smartest doctor in the world and sit them down right in front of them and they would try and discredit the doctor on how he's wrong on what he's talking about every single running back linebacker defensive end lineman fullback are not just overweight according to the bmi standards these black men love football y'all willing to die for a random random ass negroids who don't even care about you i never understand the 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 violent appeal that, that these dudes have for, for sports teams. Niggas love sports teams, willing to fight each other over sports teams, willing to, willing to die over sports teams, shoot it out over sports team. Uh, and, and, and listen, I get that you're a fan. I completely get that. You know, if you're a fan, you're a fan. Personally, that never really, I, I, I never understood having such an aff affiliation, having such an addiction to another group of men who don't know that I exist. I never understand that. I enjoy sports, yes. I enjoy going to basketball games, baseball games, whatever it might be. Uh, but I'm not fixated so much to the point to where my actual identity rests in in the mascot of, of a sports team. Uh, I'll never under get that. Uh, I'll never get that. Some of the most fit people on the planet are obese. Now, 
to also prove and point out something that's really wild about this whole BMI scale is that it doesn't take into account muscle, right? It just takes into account weight, right? So Serena Williams, one of the most fit women on the face of the planet, is a 22 on the BMI index. Remember, uh, I didn't say this earlier, but 25 on the BMI index is overweight. She's a 22 right now. If she were to gain 10 more pounds, Serena Williams would be classified as overweight. Serena, the Wimbledon Grand Slam champion, I don't even know how many times. Serena, the best tennis player, one of the best tennis players arguably to ever live, Serena Williams. The one who's made nearly a billion dollars from playing tennis, Serena Williams, would be classified as overweight. <laughs> Negroids. To take this even further, the medieval chart goes on to say that a healthy weight for a woman that stands at nearly six feet tall starts off at 125 pounds. Let me just show you this. This is the this is the standard of beauty that they want you to 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 reach to reach here. All right, I'm going to show this picture. I'm going to show this picture right really quickly. This is the standard of beauty that they want you to reach. Right there, 125 pounds. Now, for our audio listeners, um, she's, uh, and I'm not body shaming anybody, this is not about body shaming, uh, she's, uh, she's very skinny. Uh, she doesn't have much, much curves. There's not much going on right there. She looks like a lovely little girl. She looks wonderful, yes. I'm glad for her. She looks like she's a bikini model. Awesome. Uh, but if you were to take a picture of the women that I showed beforehand and put them side by side beside her, I'm going to be completely frank and honest with you. It's not much of a choice for me, particularly. Now, maybe the rest of these ignorant Negroids will find beauty and beauties in the eye of the beholder and all this other nonsense. Hey, I get that. Uh, for me, it is not even a question of a question. It's not even a remnant of a thought as to who's more appealing to me in that case. All right. I would much rather take the obese woman any day of the week. Absolute fact. Now, the reason that it doesn't factor muscle into the uh, BMI index in the 1800s is because this is an ancient index measurement. When it was formulated, there were no gyms. There were no supermarkets to go pick up enriched foods and to provide tons of essential vitamins and carbs like we have today. Times have changed. Yet the manosphere is insistent on using a chart that is not only outdated, but that they didn't even have access to. They weren't even contributing towards when it was made up. And it didn't apply the phenotypical differences that apply to black women in this case as a whole, who have different body types. See, when a woman calls on a Kevin Scamiel show and tries to explain her body type, she's routinely cut off and made a mockery of by the demons on his channel. I know we've heard this. A woman will call in. She'll say, oh, well, I want something. And he'll play the womp, 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 womp sound icon to make fun of her, right? And she goes on to say, well, no, it's not that. I'm thick. I have curves. I'm, I'm, I'm whatever it might be. And the first thing you'll say, no, no, you're overweight. You're overweight. All right. As if the picture we just said or showed to you, I just showed to you, was what what was a better body type than what she's trying to describe. Now we know most black women are curvaceous. We know that curves are in in 2021. Curvy women uh, are all the rage. We've all seen and heard about the stories of, of women going down to have Brazilian butt lips, butt lifts. I'm sorry, in the DR and whatever it might be. Curves are in. Okay. But somehow, black men have decided that curves are out. <laughs> somehow, they've decided that curves are out. Artaveri says they want women to look like Nosferatu. <laughs> I'll have to check out Nosferatu. 60 likes, 146 in the chat. Let's hit the like button, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, definitely. Let's hit the like button, y'all. When you get the chance, let's hit that like button.
She never gets a chance to explain whether or not her body is muscle, fat, equal or unequal distribution of muscle, fat, whatever it might be. It's automatically assumed that whatever archetype her body consists of, it's wrong. Once again, the lack of A, compassion, B, situational nuance, situational nuance comes into play. They only want nuance applied to situations that empower and free them from the burdens of the responsibility. For instance, being a traditional male, but not being held to traditional male values, not being held to the accountability of paying all the bills. For whatever reason or another, they'll always have excuses as to why they don't make enough money for the tr traditional male value role at this point. There's always an excuse, right? There's always something. But the second you try and make an argument that aligns with the notion of nuance or accountability for said ideological belief that they have, then it's a problem. They will somehow find it within reason to shove accountability and acceptance of responsibility down the throats of their enemies or their women. Now, yesterday I released an entire video of uh, body and the body issue and, of course, received comments from red pill buffoons spewing the same ignorance that we have grown accustomed to seeing, the same mental narcissistic abuse that they love to cast into any and everybody including their own family members. And here's the funny thing about it. The red pill manosphere community is yet another group of humans uh, that add uh, to the madness and destructions that humans offer towards the rest of progressive society. What do I mean by this? I'm glad you asked. So you remember those inter internet gurus uh, that you would see play before a YouTube video? Like there'd be some ads and I think it, were about, it was about two years ago, a guru would pop up and it would be like a guy in his garage standing beside his Lamborghini Ferrari telling you to click the link so you'll become a millionaire just like him. Click the link. I'll show you just how easy it is to become a millionaire like me. Now, if you were one of the poor souls that actually paid for these outrageously priced courses, you would soon find that the information offered was so boringly plain and generic that if... <laughs> If you could, and in some cases, uh, it was literally classified as a scan, I'm sorry, a scam by the federal government. Some of those guys got in trouble for scamming. Some of them went to jail, those gurus. They would say things like, if you want to make a million dollars, think positive, or something obscure like that. They would offer no actual substance. There was no direct information on how uh, to actually make money, but rather it was a roundabout way of rallying their purchasers, of rallying their emotions to make them feel like their newfound realizations was the missing piece of the puzzle that they had been longing for, when in reality, there was nothing given that was actually applicable to real life situations. Now, going back to the NFL player, a good coach doesn't tell a player, oh, if you work hard enough, you'll make it to the NFL. It's 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 deeper than that. It's 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 not just about the mindset. No, that's not what a good coach does. Uh, there's enormous amounts of nuances in politics and political barriers of making it to the league. Uh, general feel good knowledge won't get a player to the NFL. It takes years of excellent coaching, resources, aka money. We'll talk about that later. Time, sacrifice, infrastructure, personal com uh, connections, um, uh, politicking. To get that player into the NFL, it takes a very specific game plan that has been proven to work, all right? The coaches have more to do with the player making it to the league than the actual player does. Now, going back to the issue of millions of men who are part of the body-shaming women manosphere, the typical manospheric man doesn't offer any solutions. They give you a roundabout way uh, of somehow obtaining this mythological man that doesn't even exist in the black community to begin with. They seek to complain. They rally together hour after hour, day after day, to come together in their dust and hatred and conquest to see modern society burn and fall to the ground. I said this and I talked about this on the last live stream that we had, or I'm sorry, on the video that I uploaded, is that really, this is another situation of black women being damned if you do and damned if you don't, and women in general, damned if you do, damned if you don't. They're going to hate you if you go to get a Brazilian butt lift, and they're going to hate you if you are overweight quote unquote. They're going to hate you if you're fit, if you're working out in the gym. They're going to hate you if you're not. We're going to watch a video here in a second that is describing everything that I'm talking about. What you're going to gather from these next audio visual excerpts is that making your body better won't necessarily change the quality of men in your immediate surroundings. If anything, having a hot rod bod will increase the chances of toxicity in your quality of relationships because of the immediate draw or desire that most men would have for the physical aspect of a relationship. Now, I'm not saying that having a perfect magazine body isn't uh, is, isn't, isn't a good thing. It's more power to you, whatever it might be. Uh, obviously, there are benefits to having a hot rod body. Okay. I get that. I'm not saying that there's no benefits to it. 
However, it's not the end all be all in regards to finding a stable and progressive relationship. And nothing proves my point more than this video. This video is from a manospheric man. Audio you're getting ready to listen to if you're watching on audio. It's from a uh, manospheric man content creator that goes on to describe and uh, in his in his mind his visceral hatred for gym thoughts. Gym thoughts, aka women who work out in the gym. So now if you work out in a gym, and I want you to listen to this very carefully, you are considered a gym thought. A gym thought. Okay? So I want you to hear the level of hypocrisies that we're dealing with right here. All right? You're damned if you do. You're damned if you don't. You decide to go to the gym, you're a gym thought. You decide not to go to the gym, well, you're overweight. Gym Thoughts Exposed by this gentleman here. That's the name of the video. Gym Thoughts Exposed. If you want to know his credentials, he has 114,000 subscribers. Let's dig into it. The notification button if you haven't already. Okay, today we're going to be talking about the girls in the gym. You got a lot of women that work a nine to five and they go to the gym. You got a lot of girls that are in college that go to the gym. Now, I, I just want to obviously point out the obvious here. This is a common issue where we have, where, where it's like black men just can't even speak English correctly. I don't know if it's the grill that he has in his mouth or what the heck's going on, but it's it's like babble here. It's like babble. And somehow he's managed to get 110,000 followers. Let that be let that be indicative of a greater issue that we have amongst men, the manosphere, and the black men particularly, seeking the very I don't want to say that. When you go in the gym, you got a a lot in a different variety of women. Majority <laughs> of these women are all looking the same. You don't know if you're in a strip club or in the gym to actually get in shape. But today we're going to be breaking down one of the women that you're guaranteed to see there because this is what the gyms are filling up with. And that's the thotties. So the gyms are filling up with the thotties. So, so I, I need you to, I need you to hear me. So black men will demonize black women for being overweight, even though we've already broken down that the standard of measurement to describe obesity is outdated by literally Literally in 80 years, it'll be 300 years. All right. So, so, so the women finally start going to the gym. Black women finally start going to the gym. Now, if, now, if you go to the gym, now you're a gym thought. <laughs> uh, you can't win. You can't win. They demonize you for not going to the gym. Now you show up at the gym and, and a black man's upset that you're in the gym now. But let's continue. Let's continue. Let's, let's hear what he has to say. Today, we're going to break down how to spot the thotty, what's her motive, and why you need to avoid the thotty. Let's get started. Avoid First, her. Let's what, talk it, about what does that even mean? How to spot the thotty. All right. When it comes to the thotty, she's typically going to be in three places the stair steppers, the treadmill incline, or at the squat rack. Okay. Those so apparently, if you're using a treadmill, the stair stepper or or a squat squat rack, you are you're a thotty. You're promiscuous. If you're using any of those, you're promiscuous. This is this is the manosphere right here. 114,000 subscribers. Incredible. Those are her hot spots. Those are typically where you're gonna always see a thotty is at those three locations. See, the stair stepper helps her to overlook the gym. And anybody that walks past her can look at her butt because it's already in the air. That's why women like the stair stepper. Next, it's going to be the squat rack. The squat rack is another place where she can work on her butt and people also see her at the same time. So he's he's getting onto women for, for essentially working on, on, on their butt. Now here's now maybe I'm just maybe I'm just I don't know. Maybe I'm just crazy. When did it when did you seeing women in tight clothes and tights working on their butt, when did that become unappealing as a man? This is why I question a lot of these dudes, man. This is, this is why it doesn't surprise me why an allegedly homosexual man has a million followers at this point. It's, there's, I'm a straight male. If I'm working out inside of a gym and I see a woman wearing leggings and, she, and, she, and she's squatting, whatever, whatever it might be, Maybe I'm crazy, but I like that. 
these dudes are these dudes are weird, man. This is why this whole men going their own way. Oh, bros before hoes. Yeah, man, I got you. We'll hit up the club, man. I'll pay for your drink. I'll bond you out. I'll do this. I'm I'm really starting to think that men really do desire physically other men by and large. I'm starting to think that most men in the manosphere really do and really are physically attracted to men. This is the most preposterous thing I've ever heard in my life. You don't want a woman to be wearing a sports bra and tights around you because her because her butt is out. Now this is a this is completely taking this is completely taking into account that men obviously don't work out shirtless or wear tank tops or wear shorts themselves. They they dress, they act like men just walk in with pastor's robes as they work out. But but for you to sit here and tell me that you would prefer for a gym to be completely 100% full of sausages, full of your brethren sweating, grunting amongst yourself, that gets you off. For you to tell me that you'd prefer that over having women, arguably attractive women who have and who are working on nice bodies or better bodies, for you to say that you would rather a group of men to, to surround yourself with versus the women, you've already lost me there, player. <laughs> you way lost me there, man. Y'all, y'all, y'all dudes are weird, man. Y'all dudes are weird. I'm so tired of seeing these big booties all around me. I'm so tired of seeing these sports bras all around me. I'm so tired of seeing all these curvaceous women. I'm tired of it. Huh? Are, are are we still are we still men? Are we still are we still guys? Do we still have testicles? I hate to get so 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 graphic. Are, are we still straight? Are y'all still straight? Manosphere? I'm really starting to question now. Beginning of the video, he said, Oh, you need to stay away from her. You need to avoid the gym thotty. How how do you plan on avoiding a gym a gym thotty, quote unquote, when you're in the same gym? What exactly does that even mean? Pure stupidity. Next, treadmill. Treadmill is where treadmills in the gym probably get <laughs> You see why you see where I get the dusty voice now, right? Uh I'm not making this up. This is 90% of the men that I talk to, especially black men. Uh you um, you need to make, uh, it's like, come on, bro. Let's, let's get it out, bro. Come on. You can do it. You can speak English. You're, you look like you're about 41 years old, bro. We should have been mastered at least conversational English at this point in your life, homie. Get it together, dude. Come on now. Lord have mercy. Can't even speak to this dude. Can't even speak. Listen to this. This is crazy. <laughs> Treadmill. Treadmill is where treadmills in the gym probably gets the <laughs> most traffic because a lot of people are scared to go to weights and free weights. So treadmill areas and cardio areas get a lot of traffic. But now he's saying cardio areas get a lot of traffic. Let me explain to you the hypocrisy of this. They called Serena Williams because she was too muscular. Or they called her masculine because she was too muscular. They they call they called Shikari Richardson masculine because she's muscular. She has more muscle definition. Yet here you have the manosphere complaining that women are on the cardio areas of the gym or in the cardio areas of the gym, aren't doing bench press or whatever it might be. So they're upset that they're doing cardio. And then they're also going to call you masculine if you decide to actually do weightlifting and put muscle on. You're damned if you do. You're damned if you don't. You can't win. Oh. They're doing cardio. The gym thoughts all do cardio because they don't want to. They don't want to lift weights. Well, of course they don't want to lift weights because if they lift weights, you'll call them masculine. You you can't you you can't you can't reason with this. It, it, I know we dig deeper and deeper and deeper into ignorance every single live stream we had, and I and I hate that we have to do this, but it's 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 indescribable to me. I'm really blown away by this. The gym thotties, you'll always see them on the treadmills and you'll see them on the stair stepper. And so now it's a bad thing for women to work out. I just want you to know that. Now it's a bad thing. We have some super chats. I didn't see them. Uh, Bossy Empress TV with a $25 super chat. She says, keep giving them that truth, honestly. Thank you so much for the $25 super chat from Bossy Empress TV. $25 super chat. Or getting black with a five dollar super chat says he's going to mention every machine women most women use. Yeah, this is why many women avoid going to the gym. You're damned if you do. You're damned if you don't. Right. 
You're damned if you do. You're damned if you don't. You can't win. They're upset at you for, for not working out. Now, that, now women are starting to work out and they're upset <laughs> that you're working out. Oh, the manosphere, the pedosphere. We'll watch a little bit more of him just for entertainment, and we're going to go ahead and move on in our discussion. Uh, if you have donated, I want to thank you. I haven't checked the Cash App or the PayPal links. Oh, somebody told me I should just keep the Cash App and PayPal links in the in the um, pin to the comment there. I didn't think about that, but I think I'll go ahead and do that here in a bit. Absolutely, absolutely ridiculous. Bear in mind also, also this is 40-something-year-old guy, right? Talking like this with gold grills in his mouth. Well, the stereotypes exist for a reason in most of the time black men's cases. This is a 40 some year old man who, instead of getting braces to fix his crooked teeth, and I have crooked teeth too, instead of getting braces to fix his crooked teeth, decided to line them with some type of gold orifice that's sitting on the top of them. But she's always on the incline so she can work on her butt, but also be noticed as well. Next, how to spot her. She's going to always have on a lot of makeup. Her makeup is going to be perfect. <laughs> okay. That's enough of that. That's enough of that. Oh, Lord. It's, it's, it's unreal, man. It's unreal. Unreal. Her makeup is going to be perfect. Let's continue on here. Don't go to the gym and work out with men because now you're a gym thought. Build muscle with free weights. Don't hang out on the treadmill, the stair stepper, whatever other machine he claimed that makes you a thought. Build muscle with free weights. Now you're masculine. I, I wanted to show you actually, I exited that video, but I wanted to show you the comments on that video as well. I'll read out the comments to our audio listeners. Uh, let me show you the comments on that video because if there's anything that's more disturbing other than the actual rhetoric, it's the comments. That's what really that's that's what really is is wild to me. Now the comments you're getting ready to see are from men who have a hard time getting women. They're men who are in the desert, as we like to say. They haven't had physical contact or confrontation in some cases, if you'd like to use that word, with women in a long time. And so bear that in mind as you read these comments. Uh, Denzel says this. Okay. All true thoughts are in my eyes, just an extreme version of the modern woman because they do everything openly and free. But to be honest, man, when it's time to work out, I either go early in the morning or at night to avoid all the crap. I either go early in the morning or at night so I can be with men. Jaquan says, I don't care what anyone says. Ant's page be hitting hard. Then a lot of other red pill content creators, not knocking them, but Ant touches on a lot of different and new topics on red pill awareness. If you've forgotten, red pill is a, akin to the manosphere. They believe that all women are evil. Paul in Las Vegas says a lot of women also use guys as bait in the workplace too. I see it all the time. I've had several try and use me as bait to put a little pressure for other guys they were more interested in to make a move. This sounds like borderline um, uh, personality disorder. This sounds like borderline schizophrenia. What he's describing is that women are trying to have a conversation with him, in essence, so other men can be more attracted or jealous that she's having a conversation with him and not them. They're, they're conjuring these random, obscure situations out of nowhere to somehow... Uh, to somehow substantiate their claims that the modern woman is all horrible. They're just making stuff up. They have issues. Most women are in the gym only for male attention. You can tell because they never break a sweat or lift weights. As we've already discussed, if you lift weights as a woman, then you'll be called masculine. Greener grass, a black man who looks to be in his 40s, says, forget these thought pockets, Sigma Phi. Uh, uh, and that's it's definitely, Negroids like that is why I didn't join any fraternities when I was in college. They were all weird to me. 
Young G's last comment says, and bring that fire. Honestly, I was a member of LA Fitness here in San Diego, and I'm so happy the daytime nightclubs, aka gyms, are closed because the gym thotties have been demotivated, have demotivated my masculine energy. <laughs> Read this again. I was a member of LA Fitness here in San Diego, and I'm so happy the daytime nightclubs, aka gyms, are closed because the gym thotties have de motivated my masculine energy in gym by thirsting for male attention by dressing half naked that i would rather work at home i know the english it's he was feeling demotivated because women were in the gym he couldn't get a workout in He's happy. He's, oh, thank God the gyms are closed because I just couldn't get my motivation in the right level because all the women in the gym, they were just demotivating my masculine energy. What does that even mean? You had no masculinity to begin with, my friend. <laughs> okay. So it was very easy to demotivate you because you, you sound off. You sound a little weird. They demotivated my masculine energy. <laughs> Absolutely, Caramel. They are gay, homosexual. These are homosexual men we're, we're talking about. I don't even know what this means, Sherry. I have no idea what this means. They demoted my, demotivated my masculine energy. I, <laughs> you can't make this up. You can't make this up. The comments are riddled with men that are celebrating that channel for saying, oh, thank you so much, Anthony, for getting rid of these, these women around us, for getting rid of these sexually dressed women around us. Thank you, Anthony. We're, we're tired of seeing uh, sexy women. We're tired of seeing curves. We're tired of seeing all this. We just want to see males, Anthony. We just want to watch more Kevin Samuels, an allegedly homosexual man, Anthony. We just want to watch more men and be with our bros all the time. We just want to party with our bros. We don't want to party with women. We don't want to work out with women. We don't want to be in the club with women. I'm so tired of being with women. I just want to be around men all the time. I wish all, there were only men in the world. That's what these that's what these dudes think at this point. I just wish the world were made up of men. So sick of seeing women. The women, they're just everywhere. They're all they're all thoughts. They're all even when I'm at the grocery store. She's a thought because she had to she had to she had to bend down to pick up this the wheat thins box. She's a thought because of the ways that she did it. Something very off with these guys. Remember, the manosphere makes up millions of men. Not thousands, not hundreds of thousands, millions of men who seek the company of their own bros. Yet think and act like that's completely normal. Before we continue, I'm going to read a comment of the day. Once again, thank you to all contributors and donators of the channel. Yes, there's a panel going on tonight. Man, I've been speaking for an hour already. Jeez. Yes, there will be a panel tonight. We'll open up the panel. Uh, let's open up the panel right now. If you want to hop on the panel, you are free to hop on the panel. I need to start typing lists. There's the link to join the panel. I will permalink it in the chat box for you here. You're welcome to come share your experiences. You're welcome to just talk and have fun with us. If you've experienced violence in the gym from a man who is upset at you being a gym thought, then I would encourage you to join and share your personal story with us. <laughs> gym thoughts, gym thoughts. 184 people. If you're just now joining, you have to rewind to kind of get through what we were talking about. Alex said, this is why they keep talking about abusing women. They want to go to prison. Free bussy. Very, very, very good point there. Very good point there, right? I like that. <laughs> I like that a lot. Uh, we'll watch one more video. This is another guy who's a MIG tower. And this video is from 2017, and he's giving his reasons why he just can't get a good workout in the gym. He just can't do it. He's 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 trying to work out, and his masculine energy is just being drained by the women in the gym. Let's watch this video really quickly. Jedi Mike just joined us on the panel. Jedi, it's good to see you again, my friend. Let's watch this. To his credit, he can at least speak English. So hey, we're we're at least going farther there. Jim Thoughts MGTOW is the name of this video. MGTOW stands for Men Going Their Own Way. So he's leaving women behind. He's done with women. Here we go. Today I was at the gym with my boy, uh, Science of Life. We're hit, hitting some hip, hitting some chest, some bench press, and and it's interesting. I work out at a 24-hour fitness here, and it's co-ed, right? It's it's it's. Uh, I asked myself, you know, when did we let women into the gym? <laughs> 
So you always hear me referencing to men wanting to go back to the 1960s, uh, to men wanting to go back to a time when women just didn't have rights. Now, the black men particularly who enslaved the black people, I know Jedi's laughing here, the black men in particular who enslaved black people love the idea of the manosphere. This is why the black manosphere has grown to millions strong. The black manosphere in less time, in less than half the time, has grown nearly double in size as a collective in comparison to the white manosphere because the idea of oppression, they love it. But it's, a, it's been inbred in a lot of these ignorant Negro genetic code since the beginning of our civilization. Just like the gangs of modern day society war amongst themselves, just like the black men of modern day society war and kill each other based off of colors, based off of numerical differences in streets, based off of such, <laughs> such petty reasonings, uh, it can be traced all the way back to the tribes of Africa being separated and killing themselves. This is all historical, and this is all making sense at the end of the day. But in regards to this right here, the oppression that we just heard from this man, in regards to this, they love the idea of the manosphere. This is why they've ran with it. This is why you see Kevin Scamels have the explosive growth that he's had. Because what this man is saying, what the manosphere preaches, the oppression against women, true toxic masculinity, they can't get enough of. I'm going to play a few more minutes of this for entertainment. We have a big panel already, and we'll go ahead and move to our live stream panel members. You know, it's funny because they can have their own gyms. Women can have their own gyms where men aren't allowed, but then women have to come in and work out with with, with victims. They're all victims. Oh, it's woe is me. The world is out to get us. The, we can't even have our own gyms to work out in now. Why you'd want to work out with men? Once again, I don't know. But we can't even have our own gyms to work out now because the women are just taking the gyms over. The women are taking the planets over. They're taking the courts over. The women are ruling the world. Woe is me. All victims. Millions of victims in the manosphere's realm. They're all victims. They're all afflicted. There's, they're all going to die. With men, you know, just uh, in the space, working with their fucking yoga pants and fucking push-up bras. So tits and ass. All right. Well, that's getting pretty. Vulgar. Sorry. Sorry about that. For anybody who's got children watching, my apologies. I'll definitely have to make sure that I'm a little bit more on that for next time. Welcome, everybody, to the live stream panel. So good to see you all here. The Manosphere is uh, in a state of disarray in regards to working out in the gym. They can't even find the gym to work out at anymore. We're going to go in sequential order as far as everybody joining us. We have a lot of people on camera today. Uh, well, we have three. But Queen Mercy, good to see you on camera today, Queen Mercy. It's the first time to have you here. Huge shout out to Queen Mercy, uh, a.k.a. the CEO of Mystic Tone. Make sure you follow Mystic Tone on Instagram for the best bath bombs, natural sugar scrubbers, oils, of which I'm enjoying right now. I'll post a picture up on the Discord. If you're in the Discord, you'll see the hairstyle I was able to achieve the other night from the all-natural shampoo. It was absolutely amazing. Links are in the chat and live stream. Jedi Mike, the floor is yours. What do you think about men being so afflicted by women in the gym? Um, hey, first of all, how you guys are doing? Right, good to see you all again. Um. But yeah, uh, I can say from someone who like not just goes to the gym, but like who works there, because I work as a customer service assistant. That's just a, something part time. I think I'm doing outside uh, on my college campus right now. It's like five minutes away, and I can tell you, been doing that for about a month and a half. I've been kind of knowing the, the culture, not only just from working, like being there, but as as an employee, watching things because that's something because I, I have to be observant, not only just of any situations that go on, but also the fact that like if someone's not clipping their weights. Or regardless of your deadlifting, just slamming down the weights and everything. I have to, you know, gym etiquette's a thing. How fortunately, a lot of women you don't see them. And if anything, they come in pairs, uh, mainly because of the fact of you have one that's actually like, like they're trying to do some squats, whatever. One's just trying to watch some, like watch your environment, surroundings around them. And uh, and in fact, if if you're actually trying to go in there to be uh, the place to be at peace, and not knowing that you're being stared down for only what you wear, but also the fact that you're just being there in the first place. Then I just think that's just really hypocritical. Like I said, you damn, you do, you damn, you don't. You are talking about women being fit and everything. You are talking about oh, you know, we're overweight and everything. But then the place where they that supposed to be initiating that, they don't only feel not only feel like uh, accepted there, but they don't only feel safe there either because they only know what's going to happen once they leave. You know, it's a lot of situations that happen there. Uh, I don't see in terms on the men's side just knowing that. Listen, I understand like when you're working out. I know there's like gym motivation in terms of like folks be like. Hey, you know, you see a tractor girl walking with us in at the gym that makes you want to lift weights more. But at the same time, you can understand the on the you know the shoes on on a different person that listen. You put your headphones down, you look down, whatever, and just because you know that, that the fact that you're making somebody uncomfortable, and especially in today's day and age, it's just like you can't you know you can't bargain with that. It just 
because then cause one thing led to another, you know, and then all of a sudden you can be thrown out the gym, which has happened, unfortunately. So, mm. so Thank yeah, thanks for that, Mike. That's good input, man. And that's something else that they also have to watch out for. Yes, is that there are guys who just take it too far. I agree with you 100%. I agree with you 100%. Uh, let's go ahead and go to the ladies really quickly, and then we'll come to the men to follow up. We'll go with the ladies first. Um, we're going to go ahead and go with Linda. Linda, the floor is yours, Linda. Uh, go ahead. Hi, uh, Truth. Um, I don't know what to call you. Uh, this is my first time here. Um, I don't know what you go by, but um, thank you. Um, so I was just uh, listening in over the last hour, and all of this is just so perplexing to me because I just, I really don't think that these guys who are complaining like this realize how homosexual they sound. Like, I really don't think they understand how gay they sound like you are complaining about women being around you and you're a man you're you're complaining about seeing women's bodies around you and you're a male and you're you're claiming to be heterosexual this is weird it's getting weird please admit to yourself please come just come out come out of the closet it will be much easier for you you're, you'll be much less stressed out like what is going on with you that this is this is where you're focusing your attention on. That dude, he needed to prioritize seeing his dentist. I know he has not seen a dentist in a while. I know he it's been years. Okay. That man <laughs> needed to see a dentist. And you know, the other thing is, what are their solutions for women? Because I'm pretty sure if women decided not to go to the gym and to just go and work out in the park or just like go for runs in the park, you know what they'll they'll start making videos, sitting on the park bench complaining about these women who are just running freely in a park like exactly. there will always be something to complain about aside from you just covering yourself from head to toe with just your eyes showing with these slits and just putting yourself in your home in the basement and working out like on in your home to never be seen again or to only be seen by you know one person like they have their complaints are endless. Like it's astounding to me how many things you can come up with to complain about. Like you have nothing else to do with yourself. Like how do you have these, this many complaints? Like how do you like sit there and think to yourself and, and, and get yourself so worked up and so in a state that you turn on the camera to rant and rave about women, you know? And I said this in chat, but like they want these thoughts. They want the thoughts. Yep. They want them. <laughs> because they are not looking for the opposite of what they're complaining about. They are not looking for the woman coming in with the baggy sweatshirt and the baggy, you know, gym, sh the, the, the boy shorts, boy gym shorts that are loose that look like them coming into the gym. They are, that's not what they're looking at. When they go out on the streets, they're not looking at the woman who have zero makeup, makeup on, looking haggard, not put together. No, their attention turns naturally to the woman who has a little bit of makeup on you know tastefully done they, their attention turns to the woman who are in shape to the woman who are dressed well to the woman who put themselves together they're not look otherwise they will be attracted to the, the hobo woman on the streets they're not looking at these um frumpy women they're looking at the thoughts that's what their attention is turning to so please mess with this this is crazy Absolutely. Uh, they act as if OnlyFans hasn't grown by 10,000%, I believe, since the pandemic started because men are so uh, thirsty for women. They're so seek they're seeking women so much that billions of dollars, uh, I think, has been made on OnlyFans since its conceptualization. And I think recently the, the amount of growth that they had when the pandemic started was it was it was ridiculous. The website was crashing 24 seven. Uh, it's obvious that men all men want women, uh, but somehow they've come and made a coalition of millions of them uh, proclaiming that they don't want women. Uh, I'll never understand that. The numbers say very differently. Thank you so much for that, Linda. I appreciate that input. Uh, Bossy Empress TV, we're going to go to you, Bossy Empress TV. After you, Bossy Empress, we're going to you, Queen Mercy. Bossy Empress TV, what do you think about hearing this man describe his afflictions from women working out in the gym? Well, um, it sounds, and how are you guys all doing tonight? Um, oh, we're doing great. It, to me, it sounded like he it's very homosexual to me. Like, and I don't have no problem with homosexuals, but why don't they just come on out the closet? I mean, just come on out. If you really aren't attracted to women and you don't want to see boobs jiggling and booties jiggling and all that stuff, why don't they just not even like what? Like, why don't you just be with men? Hoes, I mean, bros before hoes, 
sounds gay. Like all that stuff sounds gay to me. Um, me as a plus size woman, um, I d- haven't had any trouble attracting men. My OnlyFans isn't suffering. So I don't really feel the need to necessarily lose the weight because I want to attract a different caliber of men. It's something I'm doing for health reasons. But these men come on here and they're saying, oh, well, you saw her boobs jiggling. You saw her ass, her butt. You feel me? You saw all that. So obviously you're attracted. Maybe you should just go be with guys. Maybe they want that same attention. I'm not sure if they um, want other men or if they want to be women. Like, I'm not even sure when they are talking, using those talking points. I'm not even sure what exactly their point is. Like, do you want to be women or or what? That's That's really the question that I'm asking. Or do they just want to be with other men? <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. I think they're conflicted themselves. I think they're trying to ask themselves, really, because we have, if you were to play a tape back to them and, 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 and then ask them, well, what do you think this person's the sensual stance or sexual orientation is? If, if, if it was a stranger and it was just in a very monotone voice and they were to hear that dialogue, they would hear everything that we just heard in a very monotone voice played back to them, they would probably say that sounds like a gay male. <laughs> They right, would probably say right. that. They would. Very, they would. <laughs> it, and this is just a fact. So, hey, what do we know, though? Queen Mercy. Thank you so much, Queen Mercy, the lovely Queen Mercy. It's so good to see you on the panel for the first time. The floor is yours. Hi, right, guys. Can you guys hear me okay? Oh, yeah. You're loud and clear. Yeah, okay. how you doing? This, this is my first time. Hi, guys. This is my first time using my computer and my headset. <laughs> so, I was like, nice. I don't know what That's I'm my board. <laughs> Yeah, um, I would just say for, about the weight oh, really, thing. Really, um, really, really quickly, <laughs> Queen Mercy, I'm sorry. Pie Face, can you turn your camera off? Uh, you, just my apologies, man. You just look a little lost right now. Thank you, Pie Face. Go ahead, Queen Mercy. Okay, I was gonna say, like, for me, um, I pretty much was like a size zero when I was a senior from um, high school, and then I went to like a size two at age 22. And I, I was a tennis player um, all throughout uh, middle school on up and everything. So weight was always like, you know, I grew up in Miami, Florida. So weight was always a problem for me to gain because I was always biking to work, playing basketball on my lunch break, <laughs> playing tennis whenever I could. So I was always pretty active. Right. Mm-hmm. And um, even when I had the problems that I used to have working out is that I could not wear I used to live in an area called Upper East Side in Miami, um, a nice little area. And I had wore, I used to do yoga and everything. So I wore my yoga outfit because I was always running. I love to run. I love to bike. And this guy was like, um, I know he was a drug dealer because of how he stood at the store and everything. And he's like, oh, I want a piece of that fresh meat. And I'm looking at him like, and he's like, who are you? Because I asked around and nobody's had you. And I deserve to have something clean and nice, too. So that guy stalked me for several months. Um, It got to the point where I can't even now where I live at now. It's hard for me to to work out outside without getting pursued or hassled or anything, you know? Yeah. And, and that's the reality of it. You know, it's it's so interesting because on one side of this extreme, there are guys who just take it to crazy levels, very creepish activity, recording women in the gym, this and this and that. And then on the other end of the spectrum, you have guys that take it to the extreme uh, maddening and angry levels to where they're viscerally angry and upset at women for working out around them. It's like it's both ends of the spectrum are extremely dangerous can, and become can become very hostile situations for women. Uh, there's 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 no middle ground. There's no middle ground here, and it's it's very tough and it makes it difficult for women because you have a lot of them saying, "Well, what exactly do you want us to do?" I I, I feel like I'm at risk because if I work out in this certain in- environment or area or a secluded place, whatever it might be, I have to watch out because I'm more alone. There's not as many people around me. When you go to a gym, you're working out with people. There are cameras everywhere. It's a controlled environment. It's AC. It's this and that. There have been plenty of stories, and I think the latest story um, was 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 a lady who was jogging around her neighborhood, and she got abducted and murdered, right? Because this guy had been watching her from ha- from his house for a long time. He abducted her and, and murdered her. They found her in the bushes. And so uh, and so women are saying, okay, you want us to work out, but we can't go to the gym and work out. Uh, however, if we try and work out in a secluded area, we have we risk danger, and, and then we risk not being able to work out as effectively because obviously a gym is the best place to work out at. You, it's, it's, it, it, it's, it's too much. You can't win. You can't win. I appreciate that, that input in your story, Mercy. I appreciate that dearly. 
we're, we're going to move on. Mercy, we're going to come back to you here in a little bit. Uh, Kier101 Space Zero, one of the top contributors of the channel. Kier, the floor is yours, my dear. <laughs> Sorry, hello. <laughs> hey, Kier. Hey, Kier. It sounds like you're working out right now. Oh, no, I kind of just kind of dove back over here on my computer. I almost hurt myself, but I'm good. <laughs> oh, good, good, good. Well, what did you think of the entire, what did you think of the entire, we don't, men not wanting the men, if not wanting women in the, in the same gym as them? Uh, does, does that sound normal to you, by chance? Sound like a lie. Yeah, that too. Uh, what, what heterosexual man would not want women in the gymnasium with him? That's and, and I think you're I think you're right. It is a lie. But here's the more concerning aspect of it. Even if it is a lie, why even say something like that to begin with? I'm not sure. What does that accomplish? What does that do for you as a man? What 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 is your point that you're trying to prove that 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 you hate women publicly? What is that? I'm, I'm missing something here. I'm missing what the manosphere sets out to do and what they're trying to do by uh, by by titling women as gym thoughts I, I i fail to see how that's going to improve their conquest of masculinity i, I don't know i fail to see it but Kira, i think you're very right that does sound like a lie that does sound like a lie here uh listen Kira, we'll come back to you here in a little bit and we're gonna move on okay all right mm -hmm. okay Kira. um the one and only Kira. Now we're gonna go ahead and move on to let's let's go ahead and get into a couple of of, of gentlemen right now t march i'll come back to you t march in one second uh Let's go ahead and get to Gordon. Gordon Desir. Gordon Desir, the floor is yours. Hey, guys. How you guys doing? All right. We're doing well, Gordon. How are you, man? I'm doing good, man. I'm just good. glad to have a happy Sunday, man, with my um, wife and child, you know, and everything. So, man, it's awesome, on, man. man. Thanks for asking, man. Um, first, um, before I get my thoughts on it, uh, I just want to say, um, are you really serious, man? Because what I just hear, it just, it's just mind-blowing to me. You mm. can't be serious. Are you serious that that when 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 when, they, when men said that when they work out lift weights they're masculine? Are, are you serious? Well, not just that. It's it's that when they work out and lift weights amongst women, they feel their masculinity being drained from them. This is what this is what this is what they say, man. This is what they say. There are millions of men who feel the same way. And the video that we watched, his subscriber base was 110,000 subscribers, mm -hmm. 114,000. Uh, so, yeah, this is what they say, man, as crazy as it be. is. All right. I'm going to give my input and take on this, okay? Um, sure. First of all, um, by hearing this guy, it's like I said on the chat, this is, not a man, this is not a manosphere. This guy is an idiot, period, plain and simple, okay? And second of all, um, people like him, he needs Jesus in his life, all right? And look, if you have a problem with women working out a gym and disturb you, why don't you just have your own gym in the backyard or in your room? Okay? Seriously. As a matter of fact, I mean, look, what is your motive of going to the gym? Have a, have, have a right mindset and mentally and your motive to go to the gym. You don't come to the gym to look for girls. You don't come to the gym to socialize. You come to the gym to work out and to be a confidence, to be a muscle, and, and to stay fit. Simple now, Gordon... Thing. You just hit on something, Gordon, and I have to stop. You just hit on something here. You just hit on something, and that's, that's, that's incredible. What you did was you actually provided a solution to one or said person's affliction. You actually gave a solution. What we've come to see, Gordon, is that after the numerous solutions we give on this channel, after the numerous offerings of wisdom we give on this channel, they'll come right back and give an excuse. And one of our commenters said it's because they're broke. They'll say that. Well, I don't have enough money to build my own gym. Well, I like the gym by my house because it has a water fountain. Well, this and well that. And, and they'll, they'll go for millennia making excuses as to why they can't build a home gym. And like you said, Gordon, that would literally solve their entire problem to where they could get on with their life. That's incredible, man. Can I'm so I say glad more, please? Of course. Truth, can I say, Mark? Let me be honest with you. Look, this is my motto, okay? Get in and shut up, and when you're done, get out and shut up, okay? That's the whole point of it. Now, nice. here's the thing. H here's the thing right here. You want to know what the real reason we have with some of these men act like this? We have people like Kevin Samuel, EMS, and all this foolishness, why they talk like this? It's to show you that they're very insecure, and they have problems with the past with women. Maybe yes. with their moms, or maybe them being rejected. By women and stuff. That's why they're so angry. It traumatizes them. You want to know how I know? Because I used to be one of one of the guys that's been 
rejected and all that stuff. All right. Same. And I used to talk like this. Yep. Right. You know what changes me? You know what really changes me? What's God? Okay. Because God yeah. is love and God is a merciful God and he has grace that I don't even deserve to get. And that's what changes me. The problem is, is that they don't have God in their life. And that is the problem. And the way they were raised in this kind of way, in their environment, this is what happens when you watch certain type of TV. This is what happens when you fuck with these type of women, you know, and you talk like this because you're angry, because you know that you cannot get a serious relationship that's going to last the rest of your life. These guys can get any woman they want, but the problem is they're never going to find a real woman they're going to last for the rest of their life, and that's why they're going to say they can't get married. No, the mm. reason why you can't get married because you ain't mature enough because you can't deal with yourself, and that's the problem why you're angry, and that's why you're mad at these women, and that's why you're intimidated by these women, because why? Because they are mature, and you cannot, and that's why you, that's why you feel like it, it broke you, okay? And one more thing I just want to say, before I, before, before I keep quiet and let the, let the lovely lady speak, my thing is this, and this is to all the men and ladies, please listen to me, okay? When you listen to people like Kevin Sands or Amias and all this foolishness, ask yourself, why am I taking advice from these guys that has failed relationship and talk to me in this kind of manner? Why, why, why am I listening to them? If you want real relationship advice, go listen to people that are married and still recently so they can give you a healthy relationship and give you confidence and encourage you and, and encourage you to let you know that there's always hope for you. Absolutely. Don't listen to people that have fair relationship and all this kind of crap and they're going to sleep with other women or men. Listen to people that are still married and going on so they let you know that there is hope for me right there. So therefore I can find God in my life right there. That's all I have to say. <laughs> Come on, Gordon. <laughs> Man, listen to me, Gordon. Uh, you are always welcome on this panel, my friend. Uh, safety blessings to you and yours, brother. I'll come back to you in a bit, okay? Yes, you sir. Can keep, find, keep finding the good fights and the truth, man. And um, thanks, um, thanks for having me on. And guys, you know, um, like I said, um, God bless you. That's all I have to say. God bless you, brother. Talk soon, man. Yeah, I'll go ahead and take it down. Yeah. You stay around? Okay, stay up, stay up then, man. Take your time. Uh, that is huge, man. That is huge. That is huge. That is huge. And listen, I know not everybody's religious. Here's what I have to say, though, about religion in the Bible. I know we have a lot of Christians in the chat. I'm a believer myself. I'm not perfect by any means. Trust me on that. I'm working on myself. But I do believe in a higher power. Here's what I have to say about God, okay? Even if you don't believe in God, if everybody were to follow the Ten Commandments, don't lie, don't cheat, don't cheat, don't steal, don't kill, don't covet, don't adulterate, if everybody in the world followed those ten rules, the world would quite literally be a perfect place. So I'm not saying you have to believe in, in Christianity or Jesus or Muslim or whatever it might be. What I am saying, though, is that there are some really positive truths to the nature of Christianity. Now, I know Negroids are going to become, you know, statisticians, historical majors and tell me about how the white man came over and started, you know, the European Crusades and how they killed a lot of people in Jesus name. I'm, I get all that happened. I understand. OK, I really do. Trust me. However, just based off of those 10 rules that we just discussed just now. If the world and people operated by those rules and they were never broken, which obviously is impossible because we're imperfect beings, we're humans. But if everybody was to do their best to follow those rules, their utmost best, the world would be a great place. OK, so I just want to leave it right there with that. Think however you'd like to think about higher power uh, and, 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 and spirituality, whatever it might be. But there are benefits. All right. Absolutely. And, and that was so well said. That was an absolute word uh, by by Gordon there. That was an absolute word. Let's go ahead and move on really quickly. We have one other uh, man that's here. Um, uh, we have two other men. I'm sorry. We're going to go ahead and go to uh, Andrew, and then we'll go to Pie Face after Andrew. Uh, Andrew, the floor is yours. Go ahead. Thank you, Truth. I appreciate you uh, letting me on here. And um, been a long time watching it, first time caller. And I'm not going to get into the everything I want to talk about, but we're talking about weight, so I'll focus on that for the, uh, the sake of the sure. conversation. Sure. Um, I was at my friend's house last night, long story short, right? Hanging out with a couple guys I've known for a long time. These guys, I've come to realize recently, are Manosphere niggas. And very surprising to me because we came up through college, et cetera, you know, going up, you know how it is, right? So right. these guys start talking about every which reason, every everything they can think of, every other reason in the book, every excuse as to why men aren't successful or why men can't do this, that, and the third, and it's always got to do with women. And so, you know, they were, for example, they were talking about, you know, they were out of town and they were I'm not going to say where they were, but they were someplace where, you know, they saw a lot of women, they were overweight, overweight, et cetera. And 
I'm sitting there and I'm they're looking him dead in my face and they're saying, you know, women are overweight and that's the problem and femininity is the reason that, you know, men can't lead and be successful, et cetera, et cetera. Mind you, both of these cats are overweight right this second. So <laughs> everyone, and look, I'm, we, I'm, again, I could do this all day. I can, you know, but my point is I'm like, bro, you looking at me dead in my face and going to tell me that these women need to lower their standards and they need to not be, you know, looking for the top level men, et cetera, et cetera. You know what I mean? The six figures, blah, 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 all that. Because, well, they, you know, they're not in shape and then this and that. And, you know, they're, they're asking for things that they haven't earned or they don't deserve and this and that. And I'm like, see, that's the problem. You seem to be under the impression that you can tell somebody else, particularly a woman, what she should want for herself or what she feels she deserves or what she feels is, you know, what she's entitled to. Now, look, I'm all for working for, you know, what you want in life in whatever way that may be. I get all of that. But at the same time, if they what that woman wants, I don't care what how big she is or what her size is. With all due respect to any woman of any size, like I got no problem with anybody. It's like, in regards to size, they have every right to want whatever they want. You need to That's fix your own shit, bro. You need to get your shit together. They seem to think that holding women accountable is the key to fixing things in, in the community and why you know men, men aren't successful, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And I'm like, okay, we'll see. That's the thing. The thing about holding someone accountable is you don't have the authority or really a leg to stand on in terms of holding someone accountable to you got your shit together. You exactly. can't look at someone else and say, you know, you need to get this, that, like, no, but look, I, and I want to look at him and say, bro, look at you. Your belly's hanging over your belt right now. Look at you. You got cankles right now, my G. You look like a pregnant woman. I can say, and I, I told him that to his face the first time I saw you, you got cankles, bro. You, you didn't need to get in shape. You know, and look, I get it. People let themselves go. Life happens. I, I've been there. Believe it. You know what I mean? Like, I understand mm -hmm. You know, life can happen, you get sick, this, that, and the third. I get all of that. But you're not going to sit here and tell me that <laughs> the problem is that these women are overweight and they want men who are in shape and make a lot of money and they overweight and that's the problem. Bro, you can't tell me what the issue is and you can't hold nobody accountable. You haven't got your shit together. You don't, you make under mediocre money. You barely have a place to stay. You overweight and been overweight for a while. You ain't been in shape your whole life and I've known you for at least 10 years now. I've been able to work <laughs> with both of y'all since I've met y'all. Let's be, let's keep it 100% right now. They know this for a fact. Like, they're not gonna look me dead in my face and tell me, oh yeah, the problem is that women are, you know, they want more than what they can, you know, what they should be entitled to, and they need to be realistic about where their stance is and get the fuck out of my face, nigga. And I said that to his face. My like I said, bro, you crazy. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not trying to hear none of that. No, all these excuses and that. that's just the way I came up. I mean, maybe it's just me. The way I was brought up is when it comes to anything you don't like, I don't care what it is, whatever it is you don't like or you're upset about in life, you know, stuff happens, whatever, whatever. You got two options. You either mm -hmm. accept it, move on, or you change it. That's it. You got no other options. When I came up, you don't got no excuses, all this bitching and moaning and crying. My parents weren't having none of that. You hear me? Like, this is what it is. Get it, get it together. You want, you want to, you know, when I, I didn't find something happened with me and I'm, you know, on the basketball team, losing game. All right, bro, get your shit together. Come back there next year. And I did. You know what I'm saying? You don't like this? Okay, we'll come back there next year. Like, that's what it is. You, they weren't going to let you sit around the house moping and crying and talking about, oh, this state fault and it's everybody. How is it that all the problems in your life is everybody else's fault except for you? I <laughs> don't understand. You're going to look me dead in my face and tell me the reason why you're not successful and your marriage ain't working or your kid, you can't find a good woman or all these things is because women have too high a standards. Get the fuck out of my face. I'm not trying to hear you. And excuse me, I just, it's just, you know, that's how I felt. Like, I'm, I'm not trying to hear none of that. And I don't want to keep going on. You know, I know. You're good, bro. That was. That was essentially the point I wanted to make. And I could go on and on other things they talked about, but we talk about weights. So I want to focus on that for this. Oh, man. Listen, Andrew, uh, that was powerful, man. That was powerful. That was on point and good on you for actually holding your friends accountable because the problem is that a lot of guys have these conversations like that. And they don't say anything, right? Uh, they don't actually hold their peer groups, their people accountable. And what happens is they think that they're just kind of being a good friend. They think that, oh, well, you know, it's my homeboy. He kind of thinks differently or whatever it might be. But you end up doing more harm in the long run than you do good because what's festering is an emotionally unbalanced person. And eventually at some point or another, that's going to come to a head in the friendship one way or another because as certain because what's happening what'll happen is you'll both continue to live life with with different trajectories as far as your thoughts and as far mm -hmm. as your rationales and rationalities and eventually it's gonna be like you know what man you're so far gone bro i don't even know anymore man you know yeah. and, and and then it's gonna die off at some point or another you know because right mm -hmm. now it sounds like you're younger it sounds like you're what about 23 22 i'm 32 i'll be 32 in a week or two Wow, bro, you, you sound and you look like a kid, man. So you got the fountain of youth. That's awesome, man. I appreciate That's that, awesome. Man. Yeah. <laughs> but um, but but go ahead, go ahead. What were you gonna say? 
No, no, I'm sorry. I'm just kind of to add on what you were saying. Um, yeah, like mm -hmm. they were telling me that, and I'm like, okay, you. Yeah. It got to the point where I realized, and mind you, this is the second conversation we've had amongst these type of topics in as many weeks. I think it was a couple weeks ago. I, I really was when I first realized how they was thinking. We had the conversation last night, but I realized I'm like, you know what? Y'all not gonna hit me, and it was crazy to me how they were. I mean, these guys were trying very difficult, very hard. My apologies to really convince me of this. And it was funny because, you know, I know these guys, like we go back. I mean, I've known these guys, what, 10, 12, 13 years now. We started college together and this and that. So I'm like, I know when they're upset, you know, you know how the faces they make, and you know, you know what your friends look like when they're upset and when they're trying to do something, they were visibly upset. I could tell visibly, you know, frustration on their face, like as to why I wasn't thinking the way they do. I'm like, shorty, I ain't going, it's just not happening. Like, you know, I'm a, you're not gonna look me in my face. Like, I don't know you. Like, I don't know what you've said and done and things over the years. Like, you're gonna tell me that the problem is this and that. Like, bro, I know your life. I know what you've been through. I mean, I don't, you know, I've been there every day, but I know where, you know, what's what and and what, what you've actually did. So you're not gonna sit here and tell me that the problem is women. Just, I'm not trying to hit, I'm not. And, you know, I realized that, you know what, they're not gonna hit me. It's just what's gonna happen is, and this is just what I think, is I'm gonna go on continuing my life and, you know, and improving, et cetera. And they're gonna be not improving at the same rate as I do, if at all. And look, I hope them for the best. I mean, mind you, I still love these guys. Like, I'm not gonna say and pretend like these guys haven't been there for me when I'm sick. This and that. Like, I'm not going to pretend that's not the case. Like, you know, there's that our families know each other. Like, I know, you know, their kids are my, you know, nieces and nephews, etc. So I wouldn't say that. It's just like, it's disappointing to me. It was really heartbreaking in a sense. Cause I'm like, man, I really thought the world of you guys looked up to you guys in a lot of ways. And now I'm like, now I realize that, okay, I'm the leader amongst the three of us. Y'all just don't know. It. Mm, that's deep, Andrew. That's deep stuff right there, man. I appreciate you sharing. Um, you're welcome to hang out on the panel for as long as you like, man. We'll try and come back appreciate to you in a bit, okay? Appreciate you. That's deep, man. That's deep right there. You know, this happens. These conversations happen. And a lot of the time, you know, uh, in the younger community particularly, when you're still developing your mental train of thought and you are very influenced by peer pressure and things of that nature, uh, you give into or you just kind of accept uh, that that the notion that the manosphere is, is trying to, you know, put onto your impressionable minds. You hear your friends talking about this and then they're complaining about whatever it might be. And then you take their problems and internalize them and make them your own because you haven't formed your own train of thought yet, you know? And so it's good to hear that guys, that men still think independently. And that's what men are supposed to do, you know, figure out what's important to them, what their values are, and then live life according to that. And it's also good that Andrew could still have a healthy relationship with uh, men. And even if they disagree which a lot of the men who disagree with me can't seem to do, uh, have a rational conversation with those they disagree with. It's encouraging to hear that as well. Uh, hopefully everything in the future goes uh, great. And uh, I just love to hear that. That was great, man. Absolutely great. Let's go ahead and go to Pie Face really quickly. Pie Face, the floor is yours. Thank you for waiting. Uh, what'd you think about this entire working out fiasco that um, the manosphere is afflicted by? All right. Uh, uh, this is actually crazy because do these morons know the purpose of a yoga pants? It's to provide flexibilities and comfort. So, and uh, we're getting moisture away from the body. Technically, keep your body's cool. So, I, right. this is why a lot of women use yoga pants because no one's not going to work out wearing tight jeans and long sleeves. No one's <laughs> right. That. Come on, man. And yeah. then I used to, and I, yo, know, like I said, I used to be uh, in a manager, but this is the reason why I backed out of this real quick because I used to watch Anthony Spade. And he made another video that contradict that other video that you just watched. It was titled How to Make uh What Makes a Woman Valuable. Oh wow. Man. And then, bro, one of his I kid for, you know. for for those that don't know, Anthony Spade was the guy that we just watched with the gold little T thing talking about if a woman's on the treadmill, if she's on the stairmaster, then she's a thought. So uh, he made a value. Now, what was what was the what was the credentials to a woman being valuable? Was it anything in reference to uh, what she wore or her body? Yeah, pretty much. It's all those things. But one of them is you want your woman to be fit, not fat or lazy. <laughs> you can't win. And then it's the, incredible. Incredible. Yeah, and then another one is you want your woman to be attractive, not sexy. I kid you not. This is why I like quickly backed out the manifest because it's just contradicting and it makes no sense. And, and like, this is why I was looking all confused because I was thinking like when I like this whole time when I was watching this video. Yeah, I look mm. long. Okay, but I was thinking, I was so <laughs> confused. I'm like, I, and ironically, I did not expect it. It's going to go that far. I thought that's yeah. what you want. You know, 
Uh, and that's all I have to say. Like, I don't know what else to say. Um, To be honest, man, thanks for having me here again. Uh, I'll see you, Jedi Mike, and everybody. Uh, Rachel, too. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> I have to uh, go, Um, to be honest, because, you know, sure. I'm going to be working soon. But seriously, guys, uh, uh, thank you for having me here. It's really a pleasure. And I would be here, you know, once again soon. <laughs> Awesome, Pie Face. It's good to good to see you again. Pie Face is out of the building, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, it's a uh, we we semi roasted Pie Face, but he's a good sport about it. I like that. I like that. It's very true. Rachel has a good question. Attractive but not sexy. What exactly does that mean? Uh, uh, I don't even know if that's if that's if that's possible. But these are the list of requirements that these guys have. Well, you got to be able to work out, but you can't use a Stairmaster. Uh, don't use the treadmill. But I don't want you to lift weights because I don't want you to build muscle. Uh, but I need you to work out. So it's like. So, so what exactly what what if you have so many requirements i need you to put a workout plan together anthony spade i need you to put a workout um outfit together anthony spade for women i need you to go ahead and design an entire curriculum that your perfect ideal women can operate in just so she's not a gym thought so she's not masculine and so she can be this perfect attractive but not sexy woman for you and and, and once you do that maybe we can revisit this conversation you can't win you're damned if you do. You're damned if you don't. T. March, welcome to the panel, T. March. So good to see you, and thank you for your patience. The floor is yours. Hi. How are you guys? Oh, we're doing good, T. Can you hear me? Okay. So um, I'll just hop right in. And so the first um, neglect that I would like to address is the one that you were just speaking on. And, um, well, I mean, yeah, right? So, mm -hmm. niggas, you act like a nigga, you act like a pig, you act young, childish, and immature. Mm, niggas. Okay, so it seems as though, um, for me, when I was watching that playback of him, it, it was very clear. He was creating a blueprint as to why he wasn't getting the attention of these women. Because the fact that he had so much attention to devote to figuring out what they're on the Stairmaster for, what they're on the treadmill for, well, she went into the steam room, I wonder who's, it, it, that, the fact that he has that much time right. tells me that he was coming to the realization that these women weren't giving him the attention. So I guess that was the, I guess that was the way for him to get it. Um, but what I saw was a stalker, a covert stalker in a gym, but maybe it's just me. Um, as far as women being fat, again, exactly what you said, then if you do, then if you don't, um, two edge sword, whatever other analogy, um, that you can throw out there, it's kind of ridiculous. You, you can't ask for your women to be in shape and to take care of themselves. Um, health wise, a part of that would be going to the gym and or finding some kind of little physical workout plan for you. But it, 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 so what is it when they don't pay you attention, they're fat because uh, any other time the, the, the nickname is thick or, you know, so when they're not paying you attention, then they're fat. When you do get attention, if they decide to give it to you, then they're thick. Okay, it, it's just a complete and total ass backwards contradiction. And um, I, I just don't want to give any more energy to that. What I would like to end with, though, is is that men, a lot of men in the busted open sphere um, tend to think that, first of all, women owe them something. And secondly, they they tend to think that women have to live up to them or that women have to catch up to them, if you will, which is laughable because we all know that that's not true. But when you think about it, and, and it's very simple, women don't have to look up to men. Men should actually be literally kissing women's feet and looking up to them. Why do I say that? Both have jobs. Both are capable of getting careers. What, what women do beyond that is it, it's incomparable. There's no comparison. Women carry human beings in their bodies. They right. give life and birth to them. They, they then nurture, take care of, create the environment. They nurse them when they're sick, love them when they need to be loved. All those things while doing the exact same thing that the counterpart is doing. 
Wow. The only stark difference is the woman clearly has more. So I, I think it's interesting that that's their concept or that's their um, ideology and or belief, because once again, ass backwards doesn't make sense. Thank you. So well said, T. March. So well said, especially that last part. Uh, you're you're so right. There's no comparison as to the actual uh, roles that each of our bodies play and each of the uh, sexes play when you really analyze them. And I kind of likened it to um, this analogy that, you know, the manosphere likes to say, oh, you know what, uh, you're a wife, so this is supposed to be your natural duty to cook, to clean, to babysit, to taxi drive, to give me a massage, to do the laundry, whatever it might be. And if you were to go out and hire somebody independently to do all of that, if you have somebody to do your dry laundry or to do your dry laundering, if you were to hire Uber, if you were to hire a shopper for yourself, a personal chef for yourself, literally you'd be spending thousands of dollars a week. And so you're very right. What traditional women are expected to do, what the bar, the level... <laughs> The level that they're expect they're they're expected to be able to perform at is is ridiculous, and God bless the women because some of them feel that that is what they need to and have to do, right? Some of them have no problem doing that, uh, but uh, they don't have the recognition or the um, I don't want to say accolades. They don't get the recognition that they truly deserve. Um, and 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 you're right, men will never understand just how much women go through, uh, just how much they do. That's what's so dangerous about this as well, the manosphere, is that um, that compassion, that understanding, uh, the respect, it's it's just not there. It's just not there, and that's sad, man. So I'm so glad you said that, Team March. So well said. MS, thank you for your patience, MS. The floor is yours. Hi, can you hear me? Yeah, we hear you perfectly, MS. Go ahead. Um, this perfectly ties right into the point you made. These men are so miserable and they have no empathy. I think a lot of people think that when they see a fat person or an overweight person, that it's just because of their lifestyle. Me personally, I have, um, autoimmune thyroid issues and runs in my family and I'm, I'm very young. I'm 21. So I'll go between literally, um, I could drop. 20 pounds in a month or I could gain 50 in in two months these men mm -hmm. are so ignorant and I could literally if I cared that much about what they thought I could literally kill myself um mm -hmm. just trying to you know overwork my body trying to fit a certain standard and and like the lady said before it's so interesting how on the internet we're all of a sudden fat but in real life um you know I have no problem with men like it's 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 very confusing to me how they will project their issues onto women. That's really all I have to say. So well said, MS. I appreciate that and uh, wish you the best as far as your health journey and, um, and, and everything in that nature. Thank you for sharing. I appreciate that. Uh, Linda wanted to say something in response to a comment we had earlier. Linda, my apologies. The floor is yours. Go ahead. Oh, that's okay. Um, hopefully you can hear me. I was actually um, wanting to comment in response to Andrew, um, the man who spoke about his friends being overweight and yet requiring all, having all of these um, standards for women and just the hypocrisy of it. And I just wanted to um, commend him for actually speaking up and, um, and, you know, schooling his friends because we really need more men like it. It's hard for women to check a man so to speak because they don't really listen to us as much um from my experience like it's much much easier for men to um to uh check each other like it's that's so important especially when you see your fellow friend doing wrong because i i would say as a woman when i like i take i pay a lot of attention, close attention to who, whoever I'm dating for your friends. Like I wouldn't know who those people are as soon as possible because that they are a reflection of you. Um, and I can't tell you how many men I've dated or even guys that I have known that are like, that have sat around and been in the background while their friends have just gone crazy. And, you know, they haven't said anything to their friends and they think it's okay. And they think, well, I'm good. I'm not like them, but it's like, but those are the people that you surround yourself with. So you are like them in a sense. Um, mm. Like I, I used to know a guy who would talk about how his friend sometimes will put his hands on his girlfriend. And I'm like, hey, you're not saying anything to him. Like this is still your friend. You didn't say right. something to this man. You know, he beats his girlfriend at times and you, you're not saying anything to him. And he's like, no, no, it's not like that. It's just, no, 
that is not okay. And yes, I am going to judge you off of who your friends are because that is the company that you choose to keep. And so in a way, you're, if you're accepting of your friend's behavior, that means you're accepting of that behavior and that is a reflection of you. So I think it's that's very true. important. Yeah, so that's all I wanted to say to that. So well said. Uh, absolutely. Uh, so well said. I appreciate that, Linda. We have a couple of new panel members. We'll come to them in one second. And yeah, kind of following up on what Linda said, you know, they love to hold cops to the certain accountability where one bad apple spoils the bunch, right? Well, cow, if one cop doesn't check another cop for doing something bad, then he's just as bad, right? So I always hear black men, uh, you know, disparaging cops because they, they're all a part of the same systematic oppression, right? But when you do bring up a point that Linda just said just now, which is you know, a lot of the time, if there's something that one might feel differently about, he doesn't say anything for whatever reason or another. Uh, and essentially, it's the same thing, right? It's the same thing, systematic oppression because of the uh, unaccountability or the check that's given to said person. So thank you so much for that, Linda. That was very well said, and I appreciate that. Uh, Reefy is new here. First time reefy has been on the panel. Reefy, our Rifi, I believe it might be. Uh, probably a little bit better saying that. Rifi, the floor yeah, is yours. Go, go ahead. Cool, cool. Um, yeah, I'm just kind of getting up to speed, kind of, you know, tune in and see what you guys are all talking about. Um, yeah. But, you know, yeah, right, the... uh, oh, I have a couple questions for you first, I guess, to sure, start. Sure. Um, are, are you a part of the Manosphere or or? Or, or are you anti-manosphere? Where exactly do you stand? I saw a couple of your comments on my YouTube dashboard, and so I hadn't responded yeah. to them yet. But wh where do you stand? I'm not sure what the manosphere is. Maybe could you start by defining that for me? <laughs> well, that'd be kind of a long story at this point. But um, sure. I guess maybe maybe watch a little bit more. I'm not sure how much of the stream that you've seen. And you know, you may be, able to, may be able to speak a little bit more on context of what we're talking about. But what did you want to say really quickly? Um, I know you were going to say something. I cut you off. Yeah. No, you're good. You're good. I was just kind of jumping in kind of what you guys were talking about. With It sounded like the gym and gender roles in the gym. And um, I, I know you're talking briefly maybe somewhat about like uh perhaps like fat acceptance or something as these terms are maybe being used um and i just kind of wanted to speak on that but i i think above all people should be in the gym for their own metabolic health i when i'm at the gym my headphones are on and i'm in my zone i'm there for me i'm i'm there to to, to release whatever i need to get out of my body you know i'm there to to, to do work and I'm nice. I, I I have little concern with what other people are doing in the gym. I'm not looking at people's forms. I'm not judging to see like, you know what, like oh I think were you gonna butt in? Yeah, and oh, one more question but, but, yeah, yeah. before Jedi Mike says uh, says something. I want to ask you. So, are you bothered by by women in the gym? Uh, are you bothered by that, or, or or is it indifferent to you? It sounds like it's so, indifferent to you. It's pretty indifferent to me. I consider myself to be a, a pretty conservative person, though, um, mm -hmm. and that's kind of a relatively new shift in my life. Like, I, in my, I, I'm now 30, but in my in my 20s, I, I would consider myself a pretty liberal person. And okay. there was kind of a, a, a paradigm shift in my life within the last like like year or so. But um, I I'm a member of actually a Planet Fitness, which I would like never think to be a member of that. You know, being kind of a more conservative person. But I'm there because uh, I want my wife to feel comfortable where she's at. They have hydro massages, which is nice. But I'm not watching people to see, like, what are they doing? Is their form correct? You know, like, if someone's in trouble, I'll go help somebody. Or if somebody needs a spot, I'll help them. But I'm there for me. I'm not there to judge people. I don't care what gender you are. Like, I don't care what race you are. Like, if you're there for the same purpose as me, which is to be metabolically healthy. Now, I want to ask you, you said you're married. And, and you know, it's funny you said that you'll help somebody. I saw a video of a girl working out in the gym. And she was... um she was what, what was that uh she was deadlifting like 315 mm -hmm. this massive amount of weight and she you know if you deadlift too quickly or too hard and your knees are locked you'll cut off cir circulation and you'll pass out so she yeah. fell back passed out and this guy was just watching her right and yep. this is the same this is what we're talking about right now is this this idea that the gym thought that women don't belong in the gym whatever it might be and they they believe it so strongly the group of men that we speak about the manosphere they're so misogynistic they have so much toxic toxic masculinity built up inside them that even if they see somebody literally pass out in front of them because she's a woman because she doesn't share their same male anatomy they they are indifferent they're just like oh well i guess she passed out she shouldn't be in the gym i literally saw a video of that i didn't want to show it for well, different horrible. YouTube parameters. But yeah, man, this is this is what we're talking about. This is what we talk about. We talk about the evilness that happens within a, a group or a community of men that numbers to the millions. And I want to ask you, you said that you're married. Uh, yeah. How long uh, have you been have you been married? I'm 30 now and I've been with my wife since I was 19 and we wow. married at 25. 
So yeah. Wow, man. That's awesome. Yeah. Bro. Yeah. It's crazy. <laughs> That's awesome right there, man. Well, uh, yeah, listen, I'll, I'll, I'll have you stay around, stick around. I'm going to get to your comments uh, probably sure. later on tonight and definitely respond to them. I know you were asking for the discord. And so uh, I'll post that discord link. I actually, I jumped in the discord there. I already got it, but if you want to repost it, yeah, that's cool. No, no, no. Nice, nice, nice. Okay. I just want Perfect. to make sure you got it. Awesome, man. Well, listen, Rafi, I appreciate you being here, man. Stick around as long as you'd like to. We're going to go to Jedi and a couple other people, and I appreciate your input, man. Awesome. Sounds good. Awesome, Rafi. Uh, Jedi, did you want to follow up on what he was saying? Yeah. It is a, it, it's also another thing in talking about, not even just with the women, just with other men. Like, you not even understand just like, me, like being at the gym, how they, uh, they over, like, you know, in terms of alpha this and alpha that, talk like, you know, you if you're a man and you wear gloves, you're a bitch. I'm like, and you're not knowing, like, what you, and, or you using CrossFit plates, you're a bitch. I'm like, the what gym, the, the gym about? bros. I'm like, like, you're not even at the gym. You're complaining about folks using gloves, dude. I'm like, you know, that's the thing. It's just, it's a whole thing of etiquette, not even just with the women, just in general, just like, no, you're not a man at the end if you're in the gym, if you don't, if you do this and you don't do that. And most right. of them are not even out there. They're just on YouTube following folks, you know, like, you know, there's like some, I know there's like some content career, like Robert Frank or, other folks, you know, like souls to go, size of the prize, you know, all that mess. But it just, it just this whole effort. No, this, uh, it's basically overcompensating for something that they're lacking in, regardless of where you want to go into and that, what they might be lacking into. But you know, some of them, you know, also might be secretly into steroids and all the other stuff like that. So they're just like they're high off of just a freaking juice, but not have any substance to stand on because they just they just want to know, like, listen, you know. You know, I, I, I'm, I'm the biggest guy in the gym, whatever. Uh, I, I'm the alpha. I'm the, you know, everyone's around me is the omega. You're the subordinates and everything. But it's just like right. not not knowing that uh, even then you're judging people going for Planet Fitness. I don't even understand what the whole thing is. What like you go to Planet Fitness, you don't go to Planet Fitness. It's like I, I've seen the commercials too. But like the fact that you're judging someone for, like I said, for just taking care of their health, regardless of how long it might be. And for example, we just listened here about some people have medical problems. The reason why it's difficult for them to know where they might, their weight will fluctuate, but regardless of them just being there in the first place, where it's doing cardio or just, uh, uh, playing sports, playing basketball. They might not be lifting weights, but just going to, uh, going to the court, playing basketball, wherever it might be. You're just judging somebody for just, just taking care of their life. And yet you don't mm -hmm. have one. It, it's very, very true, Jai. Very true. Just the, Can I say one thing? The, uh, yeah, go ahead. It'll be good. What this guy from for what this guy says, um, I never hear someone say that say that when I'm at the gym, and never in my entire life to say that if you if you wear gloves, you're this and that, or you're beta male and all that stuff. I think that's mm -hmm. I think that's the most garbage thing that I've ever heard in my life. The only thing I hear something like this is only on YouTube. Probably like the hottest foods or some other foolishness. But do you want to know something? When people keep saying alpha man beta, it kind of reminds me of a, a, a baby doll. It's like when you pull a string and they just kind of say repetitive words. It's just so redundant. That's yeah. all I have to say. Absolutely. There is no train of thought. There's no originality in the manosphere. And a lot of the time they'll come onto my panel and they'll give these statistics. Statistics. Oh, this percent, this percent, this percent, this percent. And and you hear the same thing over and over and over and over and over again, and, and you realize that this is this is like talking to a clone. It's like fighting a clone army, like in Star Wars, right? It, it, you're having the same discussion over and over again, and obviously they might not have seen or heard an explanation to the discussion. But if you say and explain one thing, then they go right back to their little hive, listen to some more basic rudimentary. Uh, I guess you could say. Uh, thoughts and then they come back to you and say and say a different thought but it's something that you've heard a million times over before and they keep going and going and going and going and going and, and, and they don't seek to actually say oh you know what let me let me form my own train of thought let me let me really analyze let me do some self internalization some self analyzation for myself let me let me try and figure out what's really going on here it's 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 the hive mindset it's the hive it's, it's like you talk to one of them you talk to all of them and the scary thing is, is that their numbers number uh, very high right now. So circular conversations, as uniquely Vickley said. Let's move on to some of the older uh, panel members. I haven't come to a few of them. I see you, the woman. We'll come to you in one second. Uh, Queen Mercy, did you want to say something? I know you haven't spoken in a while, Queen Mercy. Yes. Yes, I do want to say something. Um, just like a couple of points. I was jotting some things down while you guys were talking. Um, the first thing I'm going to say is that... Um, you know, for a person that wants to be responsible and actually manage their mental health, 
Um, uh, what people don't know is that, uh, you know, I'm, a, I'm the type of person that likes to break the stigma. So any opportunity that I can, I speak about mental health because it's just people just don't talk about it just enough. If you're taking medications per medication, because it actually happened to me, um, I was 131 before I gave birth to my son. After I had my son, I went back to 131. I gained, uh, I went up to 220 pounds when I was pregnant, right? I ate a lot of pizza in college. So, um, so I, I lost all the weight right after I gave birth to my son. But when I uh, got diagnosed, when I moved uh, up north, each medication gave me 10 pounds, each one. And sometimes, every medication can give you 10 pounds or more depending on your body type and things like that. So um, I would say that that it's just a lack of consideration. It's a lack of um, compassion, empathy, and, you know, just no respect. Um, and it's a, the, they, they lack uh, mental maturity. Like the guy who's on the panel here, um, he said he puts his earbuds on. That's what he's worried about. It's like, they're worried about, the wrong things. They have black males. Let's be honest. We're going to point out what my sister calls the nose on the on the polar bear. It's you. <laughs> it's you're the blackest thing. It's you, right? So we would say that they're worried about the wrong things. Um, they have so much work to do. They have so much food to cook, right? So I would say that the the second thing is I was actually chuckling because I was writing really fast, and it says it doesn't. It doesn't matter what we do as women, they just simply don't like us. And that's, we have to chop it up to that. They simply just don't like us. We can be submissive. We can stay out of the gym. We can do, we can do everything that they complain about. We can flip it and there will still be a problem with women. Um, it's like they, for some reason, they think that it's easy to be a woman. And from my experience, some men can't deal with what we deal with for 30 minutes, let alone a menstrual cramp. You know, there were some studies where people use some technology for men to experience cramps. Women are vulnerable, but we're so strong. It's like our bodies go through so much every month. And it, I used to um, actually pass out. My eyes would roll to the back of my head. It was almost like I was having seizures. I would sweat. My body would get really hot and I have to be carried out. Like when I was younger, I had irregular uh, menstrual. So it's like to go through when I went to the doctor, they said, you're experiencing contractions. And I'm like, what? So it was like I, I was too skinny and I and I couldn't produce enough blood. So my body was working overtime to produce the blood. So I, I was literally having real contractions. And when wow. I had my son, I never experienced one contraction ever. Wow. So you Which were underweight. Crazy, that's, you, that's were underweight. Yeah. you were underweight. And because you were so underweight, it was causing more health problems than you essentially being quote unquote overweight. That's incredible. Uh, thank you so much, Queen Mercy, for sharing that. Um, thank you so much for sharing that. That's that's mind numbing. But this is the type of this is the type of it's the type of stories that we need to hear, as sad as it is, as hard as it is to hear sometimes, uh, understanding that that their hatred, uh, understanding that what they stand and believe in is not based in actual reality. Um, we need to make it a point to uh, to push this narrative, to push this idea, to push this channel, to push messages like these of actual productive people in society, actual productive males, uh, actual good people with compassion and and, and hearts with uh, with empathy to them. We need to push this message as far as it can go, uh, because when you hear stories like this, um, some of them they might say, "Oh, well, you know, you're a different case. Oh, well, you know, well, it's different for you. This and that." Uh, but a lot of them will say, "Oh, you're just using excuses. Oh, well, you should have done this. Oh, well, it's still going to be your fault." whatever it might be. And so we need to actively push messages like this out because uh, Queen Mercy is not the only lady that's gone through this. But if you would have the manosphere describe uh, what what a healthy body would be, uh, typically, uh, it, or in this case, Queen Mercy might have fit, fit that, that model, 120, whatever it might be, 115, 130 pounds. Uh, but that actually caused her complications uh, when she went to the doctor, right? So... Uh, this is why we're even having this entire stream, this this entire identity of body uh, image, uh, the body crisis going on with women and, and things of that nature. Um, stories like this are more prevalent than they think. They're more prevalent than they know. 
And until we start to really push this message and it gets to the masses, uh, they're going to continue their hateful tirade uh, until something possibly happens to a woman that's in their life. And then maybe they'll understand. Maybe they won't. Who knows? Uh, I'm not sure. Uh, but uh, we're going to go ahead and we're going to wrap this up, actually, ladies and gentlemen. We're at the two hour mark right now. They've been live for a while, but we're going to come back in a few days. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take uh, everybody down. I appreciate everybody for being here. Uh, oh, the I woman that doesn't. Yeah. Oh, I, I was getting ready to go. Let you go, uh, the woman, in one second. But Rifi, thank you for being here, man. We'll see you in a little bit, brother. Um, uh, Andrew, thank you for being here, boss man. We're going to see you in a little bit, man. It's really nice to have you. Appreciate it. All right, Kevin. Um, Queen Mercy, it was a lovely seeing you. And thank you so much for being here, Queen Mercy. We'll see you in a bit. So sweet. Linda, thank you so much, Linda, for your personal stories and experiences. I appreciate you being here, Linda, and uh, hopefully we'll see you on the next one, okay? Thank you. You're welcome, Linda. Bye. Kira, you know, I got huge love for you, Kira. Mega love, one of the top contributors of the channel. Thank you, Kira, for being here. I know you didn't say a lot, but you like to hang out, so I appreciate you hanging out again, Kira. We'll see you soon, okay? All right. I'll see you guys later. All right, Kira. Gordon, man, listen, I appreciate you joining. Gordon, it was really nice having you on, boss, man. You got to join the next ones when we come back on, on live, all right? Most definitely. And um, I apologize because I didn't know that you could, um, like, if you need to say something, you could do it in the private chat. So I'll do that in future reference. So apologize for interrupting my dad. Oh, no, man, you're fine, bro. You don't have to apologize. I appreciate you, man. I, I don't check the private chat that much, to be honest with you, but I'm going to start checking it more. You have my word. So we'll, we'll get you back up and, and get you back on the mic soon, all right? All right. See you guys next time. You guys all right. take care. All right, boss man. Take care. Gordon to see her, ladies and gentlemen. Very impressed by that young man. And he said he's married with, with a child as well. Uh, Jedi Mike, I appreciate you being here, Jedi. It's always good to see you, boss man. And uh, I'm going to see you on the next one, all right? All right, man. Peace. All right, all right Jedi. Jedi Mike 7 on YouTube, everybody. Jedi Mike 7 on YouTube. Uh, the woman that doesn't exist to you, you have the final words. The floor is yours. Okay. So, um... I just wanted to say that I also agree, agree with Queen Mercy. Mental health should definitely uh, be discussed um, within um, the manuscript sphere and just, you know, it, it should be a main topic um, or at least one of it. And um, I have went to the gym, um, I think it was earlier this year in February, I believe, and um, I wanted to get um, back in shape. And I had to stop going over there because I felt like I didn't trust my trainer. Um, and I felt like he was just, he was trying to, like, use me financially. And um, and I also felt like he was trying to make a move on me. Um, not that he was um, being aggressive with it, but I just, I felt very uncomfortable. And um, he just, and when I, when I spoke about this uh, to him and everything, like, I felt like he was kind of gaslighting me. And I, I just felt like, and then after that, I just, I didn't have the motivation to go there anymore. Um, and I'm kind of scared to actually run outside and all because the area that I live in, it's not really too safe. I don't want to go there alone and then um, be where you mentioned about what happened to that woman. So right now I'm just, I, I just prefer working out at home and just use the energy that I use at the gym and to do it at home because I, it's the trauma like you try to do the right thing you pay your dues and it was a hefty mm. amount that i paid and then this is what i had to go through mm. well i'm sorry to hear that i'm sorry to hear that um i know that that can be tough for you but uh you know it's good i think with youtube now we can see a lot of good uh, progressive home workouts that can you know give pretty good results um and then i know that that a diet has is a big you know contributing factor to it as well and so uh, I hear what you're saying, uh, the woman that doesn't exist to you. I hate to hear stories like that, and I'm sorry that you got gaslit. I'm sorry that that turned out to be a negative situation, something that was supposed to be positive. Um, but listen, I appreciate you sharing that. And, um, you know, maybe we'll have and we'll focus on a video in the future of, you know, some home workouts type things, or I can make a collaboration with somebody and we can make an entire little curriculum for ourselves and the members of our community uh, so we can kind of, you know, all upgrade ourselves or level up in the fitness side yes yes that would be really helpful yeah i'll think about that i'll definitely try and work that out at some point all right okay thank you so much okay. thank you thank you so much too we'll see you soon mama. You too. Bye. all right bye, -bye. She, she sounds so delicate she sounds so delicate and soft 
ten dollar super sticker from T March. Thank you so much for the ten dollar super sticker, and for everybody that contributed and donated on this live stream. We are nearing the end here, so we covered a lot today. Covered a lot of hypocrisies. Uh, we covered a lot of uh, the manosphere's thought processes, as evil, twisted, illogical, and demonic as it might be. I'm glad that we had all of you here to witness, and I'm glad if you're watching this on the replay that you're witnessing as well. I want to give a huge shout out once again for you joining me today, for you joining our community, us tonight, to the channel moderators, Tony Morrison, um, Bejik, and the other moderators that we have. I can't see directly in front of me right now. Uh, to all the channel members who are in the chat who have the uh, icons with the magnifying glass beside their name. Um, I want to give a huge shout out once again to everybody that has donated and just let you know that it really means a lot. And I can't thank you enough. So um, we're going to be back in a couple of days. We've got a, a sensational topic for next live stream. I wanted to do this one. I actually wanted to do the sensational topic for this live stream. But since we were talking about body and I uploaded those videos on body positivity and depression and things like that, I figured we'd go ahead and take a deeper dive into the body image and discussion on this live stream. But make no mistake about it. We'll be back to our usual fire on the next live stream. And it is fire nonetheless. Trust me when I say that, ladies and gentlemen. You're not going to want to miss it. I'm going to post the Discord link again. If you want to continue the conversation offline, then you are more than uh, able to. Discord is a service where you can uh, join a community, join an online server, and it's all people who are members of our channel. It is moderated, and so if you are in there talking crazy, if you're one of our enemies, if you're part of the Manosphere, then you'll be kicked out of the Discord. There's the link to join. An app you can download on your phone or you can view on your computer through browser or through app. Download through the iPhone uh, Apple Store or the Android Marketplace. Ladies and gentlemen, remember that this is uh, the Internet. Sometimes it can be pressing. Sometimes it can cause a stir of emotions inside oneself. If you need to, deprogram, deplug, unplug yourselves uh, from your YouTube channel. Create another YouTube channel, like I always say. Create another Gmail account and start viewing fresh, new recommended videos on your YouTube channel. Unplug because sometimes it's needed for your mental health. Also, remember to do something new this week, whether it's a new restaurant, new movie theater, new experience that you haven't done before. Heck, even if it's just going to get a kite from Walmart for $15 and trying to fly it for one time, try something new this week and this weekend, something to en en enrich in or enlighten your spirits, because sometimes life can feel monotonous and we don't see the blessings that we have because we're so used to walking through the mud that life can provide at times, all right? Uh, I love you all, and the honest truth yt at gmail.com is my email if you need to reach out to me for business inquiries. That's the email to use as well. It's in the about section of this YouTube page. Go ahead and roll this thing on out. Y'all take care until I see you in a few days. We're planning on Tuesday, Wednesday at the latest, but I'm planning on Tuesday. Until I see you then, ladies and gentlemen, it's been an honor. It's Truth Seekers Live, and we are out.